rolling like a geezer. I'm referring to Kelsey Shannon. He is alive and he is back from his grandmother's house that he spent the uh, Thanksgiving holidays on. So we have a full crew today. You're watching Gray Beard's studio. Some people say it's the most popular uh, draw stream on the internet. And who am I to disagree with them? Uh, but let's bring in the uh, let's bring in the crew here and get this ball or show. Rolling uh, all the way from somewhere other than here, ladies and gentlemen, it's David Williams. What's that? <laughs> What's that? I don't do it as well. <clears throat> you know, I did a, a I needed, I did a dramatic reading uh, of a, a short story that I did on a Friday. I did a, a, a closeout, a 30 day closeout stream for Kit Carter. And I had this black character in there and I was like, Dang, I need David to do the the reading on this guy because I I couldn't get it, couldn't get it. So I have no idea why you would want me. <laughs> why? What are you referring to? <laughs> <laughs> oh well, let's let's bring in somebody who's definitely not black. It's Gary Martin. There he is. He's not black. He's high yellow. <laughs> He's high. What? Oh, is that? Did he got an action figure of his space girl? He's uh, promoting already. Look that's at right. that. That's the reference he'll use. I'm sure. Okay, man. Is that like a female, uh, like um, GI Joe space cadet or something? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Hey, look at that! I never even had one, and I I pegged it. Well, so. it's it's a female GI Joe in a male GI Joe space outfit. Oh, so a little uh, cross dressing there. I yep, get you. exactly. Okay. All right. Uh, here he is back from the deep, deep woods. Hey. hey, sorry you couldn't do a show last week. I I'm back. We can finally get back under, uh, under, oh, under you know, um, team and everything. And, uh, uh, oh, yeah, let me get on camera here. Hang on. I thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> uh, you got a hair. <laughs> yeah, don't mind my David, rug. David was supposed to tell you that uh, <clears throat> we actually uh, did do a show without you last week. What? My yeah. bad. How dare you? I feel robbed. Who was on? Uh, we got Dan Lawless to come into the last. Oh, okay. Show. No worries. No worries. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going to be someone I should be worried about, you know. No, someone that could yeah, well, like yeah. take your spot. Well, uh, like unto God, maybe I don't know who <laughs> else, <laughs> else to worry about. I <laughs> <laughs> Not much oh. out there, but you know, Dan Kelsey right, couldn't buddy. make it. So <laughs> we we have for our guest our Lord and Savior. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, only one possibly going to take the role maybe oh, satan got it. <laughs> oh. how did dan do uh did very well he did okay but uh it was, me. Yeah. it was really me who stole the show but uh you know <laughs> we'll get to that later <laughs> okay I'm laughing already. Look at me. So, um, so did you uh, did you spend? Did you have to, like travel to Texas, or did you stay in the Bayou for Thanksgiving? No, I went to Mississippi actually, my brother's okay. house in Mississippi, uh, which is by the ocean. Um, so it was nice. 
Just, so uh, there's Shannon spread all out throughout the South, is what you're telling me. Uh, no, I'm, I'm uh, the one Shannon. We got a mixed family, so I, there's a lot of honeysuckles and uh, uh, Shannons and uh, who else? Goodlows and um, I don't know. We got a lot of names. Who else? <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever see that Walter Hill film, uh, Southern Comfort? Oh yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, I was just curious. Is that? Tell us that I don't Is remember it. Say it over there. They're kind of like short in Mississippi. Huh? So that's how you were saying it. Mississippi. Mississippi, yeah. <laughs> Too many eyes in that thing. Uh, Louisiana, Mississippi. Louisiana. Texas. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Ate lots of food. Um, like I said, my family likes to talk, so I was able to not talk for like a week straight. It was great. <laughs> so you just basically went, you just, you seriously went on vacation. It wasn't just a, you know, a trip for Thanksgiving. It was the whole week. Uh, yeah. Well, I was working too. So, you know, I had my stuff to work on. Were trying you? to finish up Shane's story, which I'm almost close to. And it's seriously one of the best things I think I've ever done. And tell Kit Carter will be the best thing you've ever done. Well, that's mm -hmm. coloring. I mean, every time I color something, it's the best thing I've ever done. I mean, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, so you're actually you're doing like you're drawing this for Shane? Not yeah, I'm actually color. not coloring this. He's got a very oh. talented colorist uh, working on it. Uh, so I got to really like focus 100 percent on just the pencils and inks, the storytelling of it, which I haven't really been able to do in a, like a long, long time. And I probably put into it. A lot more than is necessary. <laughs> well, if we could just get you to do that on this show, we'd really have a winner, I think. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, I have to give half effort here so I can give all, save give my your all. energy. Yeah, save your energy. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, let's uh, let's take a look here and see who's in the chat and what they've got on their mind today. Creative Faye is here. She was the first one in the building today. Thanks for joining us. Uh, she thinks it's going to be a fun episode. <laughs> Well, you keep thinking yeah. that. Yeah, all. Halder 6480 is here. Repairman Jack um, is making fun of Nebraska. Angela Curry is here. Hey, gents, let there be Kelsey. And there is, she has like her prayer hands out. She's praying for Kelsey, and you've shown up. You've answered her prayers. Uh, Squibs is saying Frankenstein's monster. Isn't that a little too obvious, though? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Brian right Rally. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to do Frankenstein. Yeah. Uh, Brian Norton, all the way from Japan, says, Hail, Greybeards in chat. Ronan is here. Citizen. There's Ronan, and then there's Citizen Ronan. Uh, oh, look, Comet Kelsey's there. Uh, Levi Skeen is here. Uh, let's see. Birdman Burr made the trip in. Dan, the pizza man, Genovese, is here. TC is just exclaiming monsters. And I think that really sums it up. Not only describing the crew, but what we'll be drawing as well. Uh, my homie and personal rival, Ellie McComics Gate, is Kelsey not alive? That's just chat, Kelsey GPT. I don't even know what that means. A lot of <laughs> letters in there that I don't understand. I must miss a, a lot. A lot of abbreviations that the chat uses, and they yeah. all know what they're talking about. I have no idea. I don't either. I'm totally clueless. Uh, Leg Kick is here. Marcus Killigrew, the purveyor of all things pop culture knowledge, is here. Uh, let's see. We'll scroll on down here. Henry Bemis, all the way from Oregon. Uh, he says, Aaron, I just backed the Kit Carter three pack plus the card. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Henry. I greatly appreciate that. And uh, Kelsey will do everything he can in his power to make the book look good when he finally gets the pages. So it's all on him. I just throwing that out oh. there right now. Oh, okay. Kelsey, <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to know when you're going to color my Kit Carter piece. Uh, very soon. Like I said, I'm almost done with, uh, I was thinking about that just yesterday. Um, I'm almost done with Shane and I'm going to get yeah, some coloring in the house. He's got some touch-ups to do on uh, those uh, mm -hmm. other things too before. Last you little know. minute you, things. Yeah. yeah you, we've, we've got you scheduled for like the next six months. So Are there more pages? Not yet. No. Oh, okay. I'm still uh, fulfilling. Once I get fulfilling done, then I'm going to start drawing. How um, are you doing that? There, there it is, Kelsey. Say it. You've been gone a week, but I bet you can still say it. Our guy in the chat. Super califragilistic XP Oh, come on. <laughs> no, Bibbly Bob. Oh, I get there you. There he is. <laughs> okay. Boy. See, he's been gone so long. He's like, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> uh, Wizard Sleeves is here. 
Oh, Toshiro, good. Toshiro is here. I know it's like that was such a statement, right? Wizard Sleeves is here. <laughs> and that was crazy. I'm still befuddled with that name. Why are only his sleeves magical? No, it's it's it's, it's a it's a it's like a, a fashion statement, you know, the big old like Dave Stevens used to wear pirate shirts, right? Wizard sleeves are those big old <laughs> you can like keep a rabbit in there and you know I don't cool. know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh my gosh. Take a look at a Frank Bruner drawing from the 70s. Come on. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Toshiro is here. He said, Peter Boyle being lured by Gene Wilder playing of a violin. Yeah, that wouldn't be hard to draw. Let's do that. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jay Dredd is here. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, Dave DiPietro. Dave DiPietro. He says, yay, it's Kelsey. Oh, okay, so now everybody's all excited to kill Kelsey. So maybe I won't show up next week and then come up and see if everybody likes me then. Uh, <laughs> there probably just wouldn't be a show. show. We'll just... Everybody else doesn't show up. Yeah. <laughs> then everybody be mad at you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They'll hate me. Hate me even more. Uh, David Springer is here. Uh, Henry Jeremick. Yeah, let's see. Faux Peasy is here. I like that. Faux Peasy. Faux Peasy. Um, Jughead Grayson. I haven't seen Jughead in a while. The Normie Nerd is here. John is here. He keeps it simple. Doesn't even include an H. It's just John. Um, John. Old Dirty Fatty, one of my favorites. It's always nice to see Kelsey is feeling modest today. Is he, though? <laughs> uh, Statistical Zero is here. Uh, Hidden Hand Media. Who else we got in here? Mm -hmm. As I scroll along, there's Gray Wolf Graphics. Slacker23. Okay, Kevin Wolf. And it, Art of Roy made it in. Hendon Schnelli is here. Tisman74. Uh, Brian Suddenly Old is here. Look at that. See, people are rolling in late. It's a late arriving crowd. Duck Bacon is here. We always, everybody loves Duck Bacon. Um, Hail Kelsey. Hail Never Dewey. had it. Master Martin. Hey. Hail Lopez. Hail Chat. Fire, he says. Uh, Torchbearer Studios are uh, just joining. What are the parameters on the movie monsters? Any movie monster, any monster that has appeared in a movie is fair game. Have you ever been in a movie? Is that I have actually. I was gonna ask, does that include uh, Whoopi Goldberg? <laughs> <laughs> well, what was, <laughs> wait a minute. Um, John Malin says, Is he going to read everyone in the chat? Make the show, man. John. Probably, yeah. <laughs> He's already mad at me. Whoopi uh, Goldberg would be like a like a movie ghoul, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Eric well, Boyd, forty percent Zed, and I think we got everybody, including John Malin. So let's uh, let's get what's this the next part. Rolling. What do what do we do now? Well, now we share drawings and uh, talk oh, about okay. how wonderful our drawings are. David, you got anything you'd like to share with us? <laughs> How wonderful um, are your drawings, Dave? Actually, I don't have any new drawings, but 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 there's but. A, a preview that's of the the book that I'm working on now, and I sent it to you um, in in the link, and you could post it in the link, and maybe you could show it up on Ooh. the main page where people could order uh, pre-order the preview of Fearsome. Nice. So pre-order uh, the what? What is a there a preview? Is there a link? A is there preview. A link? It's a preview book of Fearsome. Oh, yeah. So you could order it. Uh, check it out. I sent sent you the link. Yeah, Ethan you, launched that yesterday, right? Right. Yes. Yes, he did. You got some pages? They got some pages up. Yep. Sweet. I want to see? Are they colored? Yep. Um, some are. I don't know. I didn't even look at the. Uh, <laughs> Should I ask who's so, coloring? <laughs> um, the guy who colors uh, um, Kyle? No, is it Kyle? Yeah, it could be. I does Cyberfrog? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. The guy who colors Shane Davis's stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah he's great. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so oh. you could go punch him if you want to. All right, well, <laughs> I, I'm having some problems here. Stick it in the uh, stick it in your what? Twitter, and I'll get it from there. You stick it in your. <laughs> I, I, put it, I put it in Twitter. That's what I just said. Oh, okay, okay. All right, I got you. All right. Yeah. Um, then uh, we'll just move on to Gary. Then no, you got to show it now. Oh, for crying out loud! <laughs> Jeez. All right. Pull out your instruction book. 
Kind yeah, of Aaron has to computer. Burn, Aaron has to burn one calorie by pushing a button. I know, right? Well, it's uh, it's it's called multitasking, right? And I don't do it very well. I I've got to spit my gum out because I can't do this and chew gum at the same time. You choke on it otherwise. <laughs> exactly. All right, wait a minute. There. Okay. All right, we got it. Don't go away, folks. The show's going to start at any <laughs> second now. Uh, okay, here we That's go. That's an old show business. <laughs> I'm going to go make a sandwich. You call me when there you're There it ready. is. No, no, no. There it is. Should oh, we, okay. Should we run the trailer? <laughs> it's up sure. to 16 sure. already. Let's run yeah. the trailer. Dang. Let's run the trailer. Let's roll the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys hear it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I love this. This is spooky. Mm -hmm. Wow, cool logo. So the, the trailer opens up with a commercial for toys? It looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you uh, forgot. I already have all mine. Well, it's more than just about Fierce. This is just a preview and get some of the toys at a discount, I guess. Ooh, crazy. So. There's Mr. Malin right there. I love that beat. Feeling up the abdomen there. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know if that helps sale. <laughs> now, is this? I always saw this drawing on the Is this Santa taking a dump down the chimney? Is that what we've got on there? I think it is. Is this me? What is this? Oh, this is classic from oh. two years ago, actually. <laughs> And there's something about the comic in here, right, David? Uh, I, I believe so. I didn't even see the trailer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're hoping that. Is that Gail Simone? Apparently not. <laughs> well, Boy, Fearsome awesome looks one. great. Yeah. <laughs> it's an awesome comic, man. <laughs> hey, I threw some pages up in the in the Twitter in the Twitter, so you can show uh, some of those. <laughs> I like that song though. That was pretty dope. It was creeping me out. Yeah, man. that was that was very cool. So yeah. you got like here's some preview book for 25 bucks. Hey, go to the main story because you're in the uh what do you call it? You're in the uh, discussion. Well, I, I, this is the link you gave me. Look, just go look at the where it says story. Right below the video. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so that's where it, you know speaks about and scroll okay. down and you can see all the things you could get from it. There's ooh, there's full color oh. David Williams piece right there. But it's going to be like an 11-page preview book, and I'm sure it's going to have some other things in it. <clears throat> so it's kind of like an ash can, really. Sort nice. of. Guess, but, but, but way better. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that looks cool. Yeah, that's really nice. I sent you some pages that you could show. He All could. Right. If I wanted to, but you're just complicating my, my. life. <laughs> you're complicating my life. Um, okay. I just like how miserable that guy looks. I mean, he's got, <laughs> there he is. he's got like that noon shadow, not even, oh no, five o'clock shadow. Okay. Yeah. That's later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, midnight shadow. How about that? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's sleep deprived. That's why. All right. Here we go. Let's take a look at, uh, some artwork here. 
that would be nice. That would be great. I'm working on it. <laughs> there we go. Dave is the one who's complicating Ooh. your look at that colored. Uh, that looks cool, man. I hope you don't have anything that looks like that that I have to color uh, in your book, Aaron. Uh, no, <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> that looks everything, really complicated. Wow. Everything in my book is half assed. You should know that. Oh, well. I love it. Okay, great. We'll get along great then. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's something else, man. Here's a couple more. Mm. Ooh! Wow! I love this. I love this shot right here of the dude driving. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you got the nice long road up, long shot. Then we come in here. It's really nice storytelling, David. It's like you almost know what you're doing. <laughs> God, these amazing. colors look great on this, man. Yeah, look at that face right there. I love Hang the fact he's guy. he's bringing his comics box with him. I think that's important. And this is the first thing he takes out of the car. <laughs> there's nothing, comic, there's nothing, yeah, there's nothing more important than that. And uh, let's see, we got one more. There it is. Oh, that's tiny. Let me blow that up. Okay. Mm. Wow. <clears throat> God, this guy, this the colorist is nailing it, man. What yeah, not this looks. Wow. Yeah, this is a really nice job. Oh, it's like not. Uh, um, what could you do with a grease pencil up there in the sky with that on that first panel there above the hospital? Mm. Grease pencil or just a crayon? It, it's a prisma. Well, that's what I meant. Yeah, prisma. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> I find I'm getting great results with just a black crayon. Works yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Grease yeah. Grease yeah. Grease well, yeah, when you shop at the dollar store, you have limited options. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I mean the the coloring on this is like this is I to me this is what comic book coloring should be. It's understated. It's great color choices, just enough modeling, you know, to to round things out without being distracting. Well, uh, you know what I find it very difficult to do is to make it look like it's supposed to look. I mean, this looks like the scene. Like you're, it looks like I'm watching a TV show, and this looks like a hospital. It looks like what it's supposed to look like, right? You know? And that's like to do that and still make it look good is real tricky. And this is great. Yeah, it's fantastic. I this mean, look at the thing on the. Uh, uh, he fills in all of David's uh, <clears throat> lackluster stuff. Like I bet there was nothing on that monitor in the background. Yeah. Although he didn't do one in the monitor in the foreground, so points off. Because it's <laughs> off. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he turned it off. That's why he's the dying. power light. He's like, why isn't he breathing? And this machine's turned off. He's like, I don't <laughs> uh this is nice right here, this little sort of uh falling down kind of uh the way you did the the panels there. He's seeing the demon face in like the nurse. See that? Like the shadow yeah. on the nurse's face, like all demonized. Yeah, that's great, man. Very cool. Thanks. Excellent stuff. So there you have David. Everybody get this, get this preview book. Hell, I might have to get this. <laughs> yeah, there's um uh John Malin, of course, says he he only uses ink freshly squeezed from an endangered giant squid. <laughs> um <laughs> the best kind. It's expensive, but you can get it. That must be, yeah. That's cost of fortune. I'm just glad it was squeezed from a squid because that's not where my mind was going. <laughs> I know. <laughs> People, Space Monkey wants to know, Kelsey, if you got a haircut because you look a little different, they think. Uh, um, Ethan was was uh, celebrating the fact that Fearsome kills many children as opposed to... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, David must be loving this one then. He yeah, loves he right, yeah. today, as he opposed to into that man. Well, that, that he's you're not shy about killing off kids. And <laughs> um, oh, okay, uh, Gary, what do we got here? These Ooh. are pieces Ant -Man. that David and I did a while ago when we were still under the Marvel umbrella. 
um, not exactly what they used. You, you know what they used these for, David? Yeah, I still see them being put on things still to this day. It's for this was through Marvel Consumer Products, and they gave me like so much work to where I was just like, oh, Gary could ink like a good portion of these, <laughs> and, and so he inked some. He had some other ones. Uh, where's the Black Widow? The Black Widow. Was yeah. Uh, we, well, I, I, I didn't grab all of them. We did a bunch of these. Yeah. And um, they were a lot of fun, but they were hard. I mean, look at how would you like to have to draw this in a comic, right? I know that, that, that it, was, it was like that when they redesigned the Iron Man uh armor, and it was just like I had to draw he, he guest starred in like Ms. Marvel, and I had to draw him for like four pages, and it almost killed me. <laughs> I was like, Are you kidding me? Depends how much they pay in. Yeah, well, that's the problem. <laughs> uh, you don't get extra money for uh, the complicated. Look at this costume. Whatever happened to the good old Captain America, where it was just kind of sleek and uh, yeah, yeah. They, they, were, oh. they were heavily influenced by the movies and stuff. Yep. And the, uh, the other thing about some of these is that they changed a lot of the faces because they wanted it to match a previous artist. They didn't change oh. the bodies; they just changed the faces. And I was just like, "Looks like a McNiven kind of face." Yeah, I'm like, why do you guys, why do you guys I mean, so much? It's like some fan is going to go, hey. Mm -hmm. this is <laughs> they, you know what I mean, right come on. The old bit of, uh, had those damn scales that were like impossible to do right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this reminds me a little bit of uh, Dave, Dave Gibbons to me. At, hmm. And they had this, you know, weird thing they wanted us to do uh, the cap and, and shield separately. Mm -hmm. So they're, I don't know why, but they're, you know, like layers. So there's a, there's a drawing where the full arm is explained. Yeah. Yeah, they can sell it in multiple different ways on your one drawing that you they paid for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And here's another one Ooh. where they had one of the Falcon. Look at, look at those wings. Separate from the wings. So it had to do the wings separately. Go, and then going, closer I show, them. going closer to show your feathering. Those are robot wings. There's no feathers. <laughs> yeah, look at that sweet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it almost looks like uh, like me like mechanical inking yeah. or something. You know, like no human being did lines that. <laughs> That's AI inking. Yeah, Gary <laughs> did it. And this one, this one's my favorite. I really love that pose. I practice BI art, barely intelligent art. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's similar, but um... <laughs> more goes on instinct. <laughs> yeah, again, uh, uh, brush brush feathering on all the. Um... Look, Look at, at his face. I mean, it okay. looks like a math teacher. Like this is like get your teacher on a face of a Marvel character. <laughs> <laughs> He's he's clearly happy about shooting somebody. Yeah. So <laughs> I told you no talking in class. Yeah, oh, that's cool. cool. They have never topped. I mean, the the one time they kind of topped the Iron Man ar armors when they had Addy Granov yeah. messing with it, but nothing beats that like classic. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, I don't even like the red and silver one that like who was it? Bob Layton was doing. I yeah. Was like, yeah. 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 So for like all you uh, uh, inking uh, aficionados out there, this is this is all about line weights. Is this Bearing brush? Line too? The, pardon? Is this a all brush? It, it's not all brush. A lot of it is, but not all of it. Uh, George Bear Studio says, "I think these were in a coloring book I saw." I'm sure they were. <laughs> I'm sure that a lot of stuff. Yeah, they were in a lot of different things. Got some sheets with those uh, on there. Very cool. This one this is yeah. there's a lot of pen in, in this one. That's war machine, right? Yeah. No. I hate drawing these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That's I it. prefer the old uh Gene Colon armor myself. But yeah. Uh, it's easy to draw. Is he the guy that created that or is that who who created that style? The red the red and yellow one. Well, that Good dates question. back to Perlin, doesn't it? Or not yeah. Perlin, excuse me, Heck, Don Heck. Don Heck. Don Heck, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Kelsey, you got anything you want to share? Uh, 
Yeah. I mean, anything, anything of David's you want to show? <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, no. <laughs> I don't have anything of David's. Right, let me see. Um, you got plenty of my stuff. Kelsey's going to keep asking for like artwork, but you never send me. A his Thanksgiving leftovers. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> right now. I got some uh, some shank oh. I was messing with. Um, this is like, I did these wait, two. Wait, 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 wait. Go Hold ahead. on. Let, yeah. me, let me start here. Uh, okay. I was doing these, and they were coming out like really dark. Uh, because I was messing around, these are markers on photocopy or uh printout because mm -hmm. I just wanted to see how it worked. Photo uh, marker and pencil, and I was like, Man, these are coming out really dark, uh, cheesy faces. I wasn't really drawn for you know anything for real, but then I did this one and I was like, Okay, I think I'm nailing like the 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 uh the brightness of it, like it, nothing's getting too dark. Um, there's grub. He's well, like what were you? What were you? What was the problem? Is it oversaturating with your markers, or what? Uh, do you no, I, you know, just getting used to the marker because the color that they have on the marker and what they say it is is not exactly how it goes on paper. So to get oh. red that looks like red, I use an entirely other color, and then use the red that they have, which is super dark, as as the shadow mm. and uh, other other various effects and whatnot. And then I go over it with the color pencil to kind of made the fades and the blending and whatnot but you can still adjust all this stuff in photoshop correct uh yeah 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 but it's well, it's kind of a pain in the ass this is what i did with like straight ink um messing around with like now, it, are, is this the brush stuff you're talking about behind the scenes no no i haven't well maybe uh this one kind of was um i don't know if i have any uh anything i was messing around with the brush but i was making this book of like everything i've been doing so far of like uh, all the shank stuff that I've been messing with. So it's just yeah. every kind of iteration, every uh, design. I just wanted to have it all in like one book that I can like flip through pretty mm. easily. Wait a minute, um, go back. Who's the who's the Nazi chick there or whatever that is? I forget her, I forget her name. She's like a Russian. She's a, after the, you know, the wall fell. She it went looking for work and uh, <laughs> she works for my main baddie. Um, she's a badass, but she ends up getting mutated as well. Uh, that's a whole fun thing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, then another thing I want to show is um, uh, I've been we're getting closer uh, to finishing up uh, or to getting to back to Nexus, and um, there's a lot of cool Nexus stuff about to come down a pipe next year. Next year is going to be really exciting because there's a lot of things that have been worked on this year that are coming out next year. So I'm very very excited to finally get some of this stuff out. But you're doing these on pages. Yeah, Nexus triplets. The first one I did all digital because I was okay. not doing things in on paper at that time, and I just what didn't have the confidence. But lately, we've you know I've been doing it a lot on paper, and this show has helped me you know, kind of build my confidence a lot. So I had this idea, and I didn't run it by anybody, but I want to redo the whole first issue because we're doing uh, the triplets story is a three issue story that we're doing in one book. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I, and as, as a way to make that one triplets issue that we that we did before unique and special onto its own, um, I'm redoing all the artwork by hand, and I'm doing all the rest of triplets by hand. So, oh my goodness! Yeah, these are. Uh, I'm just having a ball, man. This is like doing little space oh, that scenes. Is awesome. Is that not quite eleven by seventeen? No, it's Japanese size, so B4, I think, whatever size that is. I don't know. Um, but it's like a little bit smaller, uh, which I, I kind of dig. But I, I'm going from this to a, the, to back to 11 by 17, and then I want to go twice up at some point. So I'm kind of working my way up. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have the a scanner or any ability to do anything, or even 11 by 17 right now. So um i need to get the infrastructure to be able to do like bigger artwork but yes. um i like this shot here a little this is fantastic <laughs> but I've been, I've been using uh pencil uh like here you're using crayon for these little accent bits like this see around the edges yeah mm -hmm. um just little and then in the in space and stuff been using like uh, just white media and uh uh the crayon to kind of like just Add shading and stuff, and that looks really cool. Then you could put yeah, stars thanks. on top just, of it. Just imagine what you do if you get your art supplies from an actual art supply store. <laughs> you could go next level. 
Yeah, having some splatter. Yeah, so I've just been I've been really having fun kind of going back to uh paper. Here's that paper, by the way, in case anybody Hey, if you look at like Simon Demone, he, he does a lot of DC stuff. Oh he yeah. Has this, he has this technique that he does with like um Copics and uh black and a and a sponge, and he does this transitional thing from the black. You, I sent you like a link to his stuff. It's amazing. Oh. It might okay. change up how you approach some of your transitional stuff and your. Once time. again, look at it. Once again, Kelsey's going back to the manga paper. I'm a weeb. I'm a weeb to the core, man. I can't help it. But no. So this is like a B4. I, I did this because I I'm I like thin paper. I, I like a, a very particular kind of surface. And everything I've seen from the Japanese, they seem to make way better paper than anyone else on the planet and mm. the 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 strength of this paper i've put it through its paces i've painted on it in various mediums done markers i've scrubbed uh, ink and and just everything and this paper barely buckles it's amazing mm. and it's super thin which i like because you i like being able to do uh uh what do you call it a uh, um light boxing and stuff if i want to redo something i could draw it real quick and then light box so, it but they don't have this like 11 by 17 this is all what um uh, they might uh they might but akira was drawn at this size if mm -hmm. you can well, believe akira it akira was drawn at that size then screw well no I, I just i'm i'm amazed that like it might be a little bigger than this i don't know but i think it's the v4 is pretty much the standard there but um yeah this has uh it's even ruled out and stuff like they have like the the rulers and stuff in like a blue line but that. yeah i mean and it's super cheap that's the other thing i think i got one of these packs uh i think it was i don't even remember like well, you ordered I this even... online i assume right yeah <laughs> yeah you can get it's i it's from ic and uh this is like this it's B4. It's 135 kilograms, so it's a little bit thicker. They have a thinner one that's cheaper, but um, I wanted something that'll stand up. But it's super cheap. It's cheaper than any other paper, and you get more of it. And it's some of the most durable paper I've ever worked on. Uh, it's probably not for everybody, but I freaking love it. I'm going to keep messing oh. with it, especially because it's cheap. <laughs> if I can get it at the dollar store, I would. Well, now we, we know we know who's sponsoring Kelsey on the show. Now I'm going to cut to a talk because <laughs> I got them to promote me. So, um, okay, here we go. Uh, now let's take a look at a couple things that uh, that I have. Um, let me uh, switch to my uh, camera here. Here we go. Oh wait a minute! How did that this how did that award winning cover get? <laughs> what was that? Doing, oh, how did that award-winning cover get on this award-winning show? There, there it is. Uh, this is a since it's here. This is an award-winning cover, by the way. <laughs> and uh, these are shipping out right now. We're about halfway done, so we're hoping in the next two weeks to get all the Blood Hunter stuff out the door. Um, I did kind of a very modest closeout uh, stream on Friday, and I didn't really invite anybody on because it was Friday after Thanksgiving. I didn't want to impose on anybody's, you know. Uh, vacation time. So I started working on this Kit Carter thing, um, and then I just kind of uh, never really finished it. Oh, you got to. That's great composition. Got great thigh gap going on. Yeah, keep oh, that yeah, going. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So anyway, uh, there's some sort of goop. I put a few yeah, eyeballs yeah, down yeah, in the goop, yeah. so I don't know. Just add uh, a tentacle or two and... You're yeah. ready to go. There are no tentacles this time, but goop, I guess, is probably just as bad, right? Yes. <laughs> Ask Schmegma. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> you mean magma? Schmegma, you mean? Um, now, if last week we won awards uh, for, you know, we gave out awards for first wow. place, clearly, clearly this would be the first place finisher last week, but it's not a competition. It's just a friendly get together of artists. And, uh, but that's what we did last week. Well, you weren't here, Kelsey. Jeez, I'm glad. I, look at that. I don't know. I'd compete against that. That's pretty badass. There you go. Wow. That's, uh, Good deal. That's Pitt, of course, and uh, already sold this to somebody. How about that? Nice. Dale, um, did he buy it? Yeah, Dale. <laughs> he offered to, to trade me beer for it, and I was like, no, I, I really need money. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, so that... Uh, that was from last week. So that's uh, that's all I got for you. So I think he needs bigger arms, though. 
well, that's you're probably right. I, Bigger. Uh, you can't. Yeah, you, awesome. you got those giant guns. Um, I got to find some paper. If only I had some of that Japanese paper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, we're doing movie monsters. Uh, David, what are you going to do? The Universal Monsters. <laughs> All of them? As many as I can. Wow. They start the clock, man. On one piece? Yep. Wow. Okay. Okay, so you'll be done next month? <laughs> <laughs> Where? I can't find any paper. What is going on around here? You An artist me? with no paper. I know. It's, it's, uh, it's chilling, really. I'm like uh, drowning in paper. I got every okay. kind of paper. None of it good, but... Oh, here, wait a minute. Here we go. That sounds pretty good. I'm going. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, I was going to go with the Stonehenge paper that's really expensive, and I opened it up, and it's it's empty. Ah, holy crap! What are you going to do? Look at him, like uh, low key bragging on how much artwork he does. Oh, I just can't. I just I draw so much. <laughs> can't even find paper. It just sells immediately. There's a piece. There's a piece. That's right. I can't keep it in stock. <laughs> Uh, I was thinking of drawing um, uh, what is it, Harvey Weinstein? Uh, <laughs> what do you think? Maybe uh, Kevin Spacey, perhaps? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. So many options for movie monsters. Oh, <laughs> my goodness, I don't know what they even. Uh... Uh, uh, no, maybe... actually, I'm I'm gonna draw uh, a gremlin. A gremlin from like uh, the movie Gremlins or from yes. the man on the wing? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to do a gremlin. I'm going to do Mogwai. Because I think, I mean, if you everybody's like, oh, the gremlin's the problem. No, that little shit from the beginning. That little furry animal, he was the worst. <laughs> Bill Cosby. Mowgli? God says Bill Cosby. <laughs> Mo is it Mogwai? Mogwai. I his call name? him Mowgli. <laughs> Mowgli. <laughs> No, well, hard. I think it's funny. It sounds like he has kind of a Japanese manga name too. I just yeah. find that interesting that uh, <laughs> you would go that direction. No, his Japanese name is uh, Wong Fung Hao. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff and Val. Um, all right, I'm gonna. Gosh darn it! I just broke the lead off my pencil. I'm doing. Uh, I'm gonna you? do. I'm gonna do the blob. <laughs> Oh, nice and easy. I yeah, see. Well, I, you know, Splatter uh, City. I'm feeling a little, uh, little pressure today. I did so well last week with Pitt that I'm, uh, yeah, I think I, I'm entitled to go go easy this week. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm second thought. I'm going to draw that like ball uh, from uh, what was it? Um, I am not a number. I am a free man. What's that? Uh, the prisoner. Prisoner. Remember the yeah, ball? That, that was a weather balloon that they used. Yeah, oh, since no, he's no, drawing no. the blob, I'm gonna draw that thing. Wait a minute, what nice was the thing. what was the ball is back? What was that? Um, what was that movie called? It had like the the ball that flew around and like would drill into people's heads. Um, oh, phantasm! Phantasm! Uh, there you yeah. go. Man, you can draw the tall man. Was that his name? Uh, yeah, the tall man. I, but uh, that sphere. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. Why is it? Yeah, let me get so my dark circle dark. template out. I'll be done in no time. <laughs> because I'm done already. <clears throat> Aaron, why is your paper so dark? Uh, because it's dark paper. I mean, are, is it, are you doing a trick with it? Are you doing a color? Or what's you doing white? Uh, no, it's the only thing I could find. <laughs> uh, <okay>. <laughs> well, <laughs> now you have to use it to your advantage, where you have to do white media. Oh, see, now, now, see. Make now, that the base right? tone. I'm what? Just trying to draw something, and you guys are making an issue of it. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's what we do. <laughs> I, yeah, I forgot. Well, you weren't here last week, so I've forgotten everything. All right, here we go. Oh, wait. Yeah. I want to say hi back to the Gordy Gypsy. Uh, thank you. I like to, I like to uh, acknowledge when people uh, single me out. Well, you should. If you yep. don't acknowledge right. them, then they're going to quit singling you out. Yep. So that's, yeah, that's... Uh, I'm, I'm giving the chat a tip on how to get their comment read. <laughs> Be nice to Gary. <laughs> Tickle the balls. Right. My spirit can't find anything. Oh, wait a minute. I found something. 
Look, look, Kelsey's inking already. Yeah, I'll be I'll be what? done in just a second. What? What? <laughs> um, you hear it all from a panic in your voice. All right, here you go. Here's some white paper, David. Are you happy now? <laughs> you racist. I know, right? <laughs> He de David demanded it. So. Okay, see, so duck, duck bacon is, is getting with the program. Master Martin is the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you don't oh, even it have works. To, you don't even have to super chat. Just say nice things about Gary, and he'll read your... Uh... Truth in advertising. Absolutely. Gary's a man of his word. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see. Who can get done faster, me or Gary? <laughs> Or get me or uh, Kelsey? Um, me. I'm done. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, everybody. Appreciate the uh, talk about paper. Bully Badger says African American paper is bigger. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, okay, Henry Bemis. Gary, you're looking very handsome today. Whoa! I don't know where this whole show is going, don't we? I've never, I've never heard Gary read so much of the chat. I, mean, yeah, <laughs> I think you got yeah, you're onto something. The rule and read, read it correctly. Stuff. I read stuff that I think is interesting. <laughs> that was my best Rob Liefeld uh, a version of a the ball from Phantasm. What do you think? Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh wait, I gotta. You gotta be. Gotta be hitting somebody in the fore, or there should be a forehead right there coming at you. Or something. That's, that's like, like yeah, old school. Uh, uh, bad uh, angle for it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's all Rob yeah. Liefeldish. Uh, Passmaster Dan, Gary has a great <laughs> sense of gas. That's like a knife. <laughs> All right, Jimmy Reyes says, go. Gary Martin, in, in all caps, don't read this comment. <laughs> God, it even works <laughs> when you're saying don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Henry Jerebeck, Gary Martin, what is Aaron drawing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, we can see where this is going. I was about to say drawing a paycheck, but. Yeah, we know that's not. Uh, we don't actually pay yeah, anybody for this true. show. Um, Aaron, did you did you confirm what you were doing? I'm drawing the blob. Oh, okay. I thought you were. I thought you were uh, shoshing. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, he's for oh, real. <laughs> uh, he is taking you. the easiest way out possible. Yes, yep. Marcus <laughs> for putting up the, a link. Appreciate it. You always can count on Marcus for that. Nothing else but that. That, sure. yeah, Marcus is. Yeah. Chris Becker. Hey, Gary. What the heck is David drawing? He's universal drawing monsters. all the universal monsters, apparently. <laughs> On one page. Are you doing it like those multiple covers that you did for the Batman villains and make it really huge? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, got, well, you got a couple pieces of paper there. You don't need to worry about that. As usual, they don't worry about what I'm doing. <clears throat> now I can't, yeah. I can't find an eraser. Not that I need one. I'm just saying that, you know. Don't get paid to erase. <laughs> right. Paid to pencil. I don't get, actually, I don't get paid. So. <laughs> um. Are you guys like me? Use the eraser uh, probably more than the pencil? Or is that just me? Uh, I tend to erase faces like crazy. Um, the rest of the figures and stuff, generally not. But faces, yes. Can't, uh, can't ever get them right. How do you, how do you think guys like, uh, Kim Jong-Gi and, uh, even Ethan to some degree, uh, where they just draw straight in ink you know like do you i do a lot of that with wraith of god but i'm not attempting to be have a refined look you know so it works out okay because even if you say well maybe that line isn't great there or that shade you know what i mean you can just sort except of except for the faces though right like you're spending yeah. most of your time probably penciling your faces yeah 
<clears throat> and then you just sort of you just sort of knock you do a knock out of the the figure work or whatever right even like a lot of the wrinkles and stuff and clothes i'll put in with the pen um so uh but it's but it's because i'm going for a particular look on on kit carter it's going to be the pencils are going to be super tight Gary, have you ever erased any pencilers' pencils and drawn something better? Oh, I do that all the time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's not the answer I was expecting. I he's drawing something different. Let's get that clear now. Oh, is better. It, is it See, that's better, the, or is it that's just the word that I latched onto? <laughs> Every time he inks me, he does that. Yeah. <laughs> Let me fix this guy. You do a better <laughs> hand than this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, just a heads up, everyone. Uh, Karen Kaiser Stone is in the chat, so we have to go. All right, so no, no, uh, we'll have to forget all our stories about him that we were telling earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, later, later. I got some good ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, he, I thought he was gonna, he said he was gonna draw a Kit Carter piece, and I've yet to see it. I'm just oh. Someone got put on blast. <laughs> <laughs> Just curious, that's all. I mean, you know, people say stuff, they don't really mean it. You know, that's maybe where he's going. I don't know. Well, actually, I, actually, I kind of don't want him to do it either because then <laughs> <laughs> he'll end up in the book and, you know, make us all look bad. Well, I'll speak for yourself. <laughs> nah, that's pretty much echoes my sentiment as well <laughs> he can speak for me yeah could <laughs> you too all right uh, uh what did um what i was gonna say brusky the great is saying he can't believe aaron isn't doing creature from the black lagoon well here's the thing i've done the creature from the black lagoon like gazillion times a gazillion times i'm telling you and uh i wanted to draw something that uh, i haven't drawn and i've certainly never drawn the blob before <laughs> uh, people that can't draw that's like a that's one of the you know yeah see if you can draw the blob <laughs> It seemed like the it'd be an opportunity to do a portrait of Steve McQueen. Now see, see that would, now you're getting hard again. That's difficult. I don't want it to be <laughs> difficult. Great if a wants to know Gary, ask Aaron if he passed on my message to Kelsey. Oh, uh I had this what message is this. Actually, no, she sent a she sent a piece that she did. She wanted me to show you. Uh Creative Fay, you want me to show it on the show? Or do you not want it? Put put in the chat if you want me to show it on the show because I got it right here. I'll I'll bring it up. <laughs> you know what this is going to start. Uh oh, what am I in for? Well, now everybody will be said. Is it a stuff. portrait of me? You know, hey, oh, I'm starting. I am very all right with that. I'm what? Uh, I'm always looking for reasons not to draw on this show. So. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> huh, great work, Faith, and that's a good one. Good work. It's like if uh, you're going to distract me, you know, I, I, I've known to be distracted before on this, uh, but still come out with a <laughs> tremendous. Uh, you can't even get the words out. You're so distracted. <laughs> Dale, I have not uh, drawn what, Steve McQueen. What were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> You were showing me a face picture, create a face. <laughs> well, I want to get her on a face. Yeah, sure, if you want. Okay. Uh, this probably isn't even uh, the right thing. I'll show something. She goes, that's not what I want. Uh, where is it? Uh -huh. I thought I had it. Oh, there it is. I don't know if she's like, this is her vision of uh, a younger Kelsey, maybe. I don't uh -oh. know. <clears throat> Here it is. There you go, Kelsey. This is a creative face sent me. He said, show oh, this to cool. Kelsey. Hey. Ah, yeah. That's uh, Hank. Hank Shank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. There you go. 
Yeah, thank you. Light yeah, up. I need to yeah. gather up all these. There's been a a, a few uh, drawings. I'd love to put them in the book. Some fan art. Is he is he lighting up weed or is that a cigarette? Sure. Okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah, either, either, either or, right? <laughs> there you go. That's uh, that's creative Faye sending you all her best. So nice, awesome. Nice. Thank you. That's great. There you no go. Uh, yeah, done a portrait of me. Wonder I may have the most fan art of anybody that didn't hadn't even put out a book yet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what the heck, man? Yeah, I need to go gather it all up because. Uh, that's true. You could have a special chapter in your. That's actually like cash grab. That's like my favorite part of cash grab is the fan uh, art book of all of Cecil drawings. Um, yeah, I love that stuff. Definitely want to do something like that. My Mogwai is not working out well. He's hard, <laughs> deceptively hard to draw. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You like pick something, you go, oh, this will be easy, this cute little furry thing. And then you're like, you just can't get it. It's like Baby Yoda. You keep drawing it and you're like, this should be easy. Why does this not look like Baby Yoda? I also uh, thought I had a good idea. And then my reference that I'm looking at right now, the movie poster is the same damn thing. So, um, so you're basically hmm. copying something that someone else has. I am. So I may do another one. Let me finish this one up real quick and I'll do another one real quick. Throw out a movie monster idea, uh, chat. Give me, give me. What do you, what do you want me to do? Um, changing the subject a bit, Mr. Joker. Is, I kind of like your idea, Ethan. John and and Cecil need a rival drawing show called Die Dyed Beards. Dyed Gary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gary will be the constant in all the beard related drawing shows. Yeah, I would, I would moderate that. <laughs> dyed beards. <laughs> what was that uh japanese um monster movie where it had this big like aquatic fish thing it was called the uh... godzilla no 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 <laughs> oh <laughs> oh uh the um come on you guys it was uh it was a one-word title like uh the and it was Mothra. A... oh Mothra. yeah that was it why would I didn't I think now I gotta look it up? Um a one word Japanese monster movie came from the ocean. The uh, yeah, it was like a big kind of like fish looking thing. Leviathan. No, it wasn't Leviathan, it was um Oh, that's one of my favorite trash movies. <laughs> did they ever show the monster? They did at the very end, didn't they? I think so, Leviathan. Yeah. yeah, it was just a mishmash. It was like the thing. It was just yeah. like a mishmash of everything. In hand media says sushi. <laughs> close, <laughs> close. Uh, you, guess what you guess what comes up when you type in uh, Japanese monster movie Godzilla yes <laughs> and nothing else and that's uh, not the one you're looking for no it's uh it's, Rodan? it's not, no it has nothing to do with Godzilla Violante oh uh, uh, what's oh. your point I mean I've forgotten why we're Trying to no, because it. we were talking about monsters. I know that uh, you know Kelsey's a big uh, Japanese film fan, and I was just curious if he'd seen it. And it was like called the not the curse. What the heck was it called? Um, the, the uh, one that's like a big turtle. No, it looks like it looks like I don't know. Forget I even <laughs> brought it up. No, I no yeah. way we're gonna forget this now. Um, <laughs> the Grudge. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is—the host. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't huh? like that movie. Did you see that movie? Yeah, I didn't like it. I it got like rave reviews. Why didn't you I like know? It? Everybody was like hooping and hollering over it. That's a—it's not a Japanese one. It's Korean. Okay, um, well, you know, <laughs> uh, Korean. No, <laughs> Koreans, like, make, <laughs> Koreans make badass movies, and that guy Jun Bong Ho or whatever his name is—the guy that made that movie. He did uh, Snowpiercer, which I really liked. Um, he did uh, the one that won the Academy Award a couple years ago, which I did not. Yeah, see. the um, yeah that that guy that was living in their house or whatever. And they, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I have intentionally not spoiled any of it, but thank you for spoiling that. Um, well, no, it was. Uh, <laughs> well, it, this was the host, and I think the one that you're talking about was called the Hostess. So it was a little bit different. Oh, I don't know. But uh, no, I, I've seen the host though. I'm not, not a huge fan of it, honestly. Everybody was raving about it. I'm like, 
Okay, this is weird. Aaron Mortal yeah. V says to Aaron, they all rook a Reich. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey now. Vow. I didn't I was not implying anything. You guys are reading between the lines here, trying to get me in trouble. Based on available information. <laughs> Based on limited information that we have, this is the conclusion that we've drawn. Uh, okay, anyway, here's the thing. Yeah, David, you're involved in this. You can't get away. Um, are, are you trying to get me to draw the monster from the host? Is no, that no, the no, I'm just there oh. it is. There it is. Um, what? Yeah, it's just like a big lizard thing. Yeah, well, that's good enough to for me to watch a movie. Honestly, wouldn't mind drawing like the Predator. That's why, legitimately, my favorite movie monster might be the Predator. Is that you a? Know, but that's a movie Alien, though, so I don't know. Your uh, your Gremlin drawing would be better if you put like a seg hanging out of his mouth. Oh yeah, I think so. No. I always do that. <laughs> <laughs> you always draw that. You draw. No, it's like I drew. Uh, I drew Fred Flintstone with a smoke hanging out of yeah. his mouth. People love it. consider the source. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do the opposite of what Aaron says. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> no, wait, I'm curious about this film because I've been wanting to see it. So you didn't like it. Give me a review. What was? Uh, what did? Well, there was all kinds of weird stuff. Like there, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but there was a lot of like crying and weird, you know, <laughs> emotional behavior <laughs> that yeah, I, it didn't crying. feel like what should be happening, you know, like. And, and then there was like the the main character was like weirdly obsessed with his sister or something. Like there was. Oh my god! Well, this is I, I, I barely getting... remember it. Like I said, I just remember it being like really bizarre and. Not so it must be like knowing that guy's films now, it makes me wonder if that was, you know, the monster was just an allegory for something else that I wasn't picking up on. You know, <laughs> he seems to be a lot smarter filmmaker than I was given that movie credit for. So um I honestly don't yeah, I don't I just didn't like it. <laughs> oh, okay. Then I will go see it for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I'm one of the few people that don't like it, though. Most people seem to really like that movie. So, I don't know, yeah. what do I know? Well, that, that's what we're trying to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Not much, apparently. <laughs> that is I don't know. What's the crowd saying? Nate313 is uh, mentioning Incredible Melting Man. Was, says He says that was great. I saw that in the theater when it first came out. I thought that was awesome. I don't the think Melting Man? Yeah. The Incredible Melting Man. My favorite scene is like he's walking through the woods and he brushes up against a tree and leaves his ear on a branch. <laughs> That's my kind of movie right there. Is that the one uh, I saw? I watched a lot of the Red Letter Media guys and they did something like a Melting Man thing. Um, and there was like a moment where they had this like scientist guy that's like, you know, trying to, you know, I guess stop the cops from shooting the melting man and they just shoot him right in the face. <laughs> He's like, stop, I'm dying. I'm Dr. Ted Nelson. And then they just shoot him right in the face. That was great. Good moment. Learn, yeah. That wasn't a melting man movie. I wonder if that was the same one. How, Gary, how old was that film? I don't remember when I saw it. I think I saw it well, maybe college years. So it's it's pretty old. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, it wasn't like a first run when you saw it, right? I mean, it was like that was a black and white film, wasn't it? Or am I mistaken? No, it was color. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was it was new when I saw it. So it's yeah, it's it's been out there a while. Kelsey draw Rich Evans. Is he? He's not a movie monster. <laughs> he's a sympathetic monster. Who's Rich? El is saying maybe sometime in the seventies. That that I think he's he's right because that's when I would have probably mid to late seventies is, is when I saw it. Hmm. Sounds like a Richard 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 Corbin a Roger Corman uh, special. Yeah, wasn't it? Wasn't it kind of like a low budget thing like that it was low budget definitely mm -hmm. and there was no story it was just a guy who was like melting <laughs> that's all it was it just, it just one day got hot and he started melting the end i, I can't remember 
you're probably the only one that doesn't ironically, uh, you know, that doesn't ironically like it. You like actually like it. No, I did. Because, <laughs> you know, I mean, he slowly, you know, he starts to get soft and then he starts leaving, you know, body parts are falling off him. And so leaving an ear on a, on a tree branch that was, I remember. That sounds like, that my, was vivid. Story. Yeah. That sounds like my story. I'm slowly getting soft. <laughs> yeah. I know it, I'm going to start losing body parts. Oh, my gosh. So, okay. Yeah, uh, a fly. Jughead Grayson says uh, 1977. So my memory is not so bad. I That's my college years. I was uh, two years old. <laughs> I was in, uh, I was in, uh, I was junior high still. So. <laughs> I'm not trying to make you feel old or anything, Gary. I'm just saying. You know, oh, I am. I was just a. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, that'll do for my Mogwai. You know, okay. no, somebody was, somebody, oh, it was Billy Tucci was telling me, or it, it was him and Graham Nolan either talking about it or something that. Every Thanksgiving, and they're both New Yorkers, right? And um, that they would show on Thanksgiving, they would show every Thanksgiving, they'd show King Kong on this channel, followed up by Mighty Joe Young. And I thought, that's the weirdest, when they were kids, right? And I thought, that's the weirdest thing. Why would you, why would King Kong be considered a holiday special? And so I'm flipping through the channels on Thanksgiving. And I can't remember what channel it was, but they had King Kong, and right after it was Mighty Joe Young. So this has got to be a thing, and I'm uh, completely unaware of why it would be a thing, but apparently it is a thing. Are there Christmas themes in it? Like I, uh... I don't know. Uh, hold on a second. Creative Faye is reminding me how old I am. I'm not going to read your, <laughs> <laughs> your comment. Yeah, if you get her drawing on the show, then suddenly she's talking yeah. trash. Hellraiser said, uh, um, it's, I'm, I'm assuming he's referring to Melting Man. It was one of Rick Baker's first makeup jobs. Oh, how about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. The right there makes it worth it. No, the makeup was amazing. I mean, it really. You guys, do you guys follow Rick Baker on Instagram? No. no you should, because he is constantly, he's retired supposedly, but he's constantly making masks and sculptures and like miniature sets. He had this like, he did a, a Frankenstein maquette, looked like Karloff, right? And then he built this whole uh, lab scene. And the, the I guess the maquette was maybe, I don't know, 12, 14 inches tall. And then he did like a stop motion thing with it. And he shows clips like this, posts them on his Instagram. And they're just freaking awesome. Wow. So I will make a note of that. If you're not following Rick Baker, um on instagram you should be and he did not pay me for that uh endorsement uh although it'd been nice if he had <laughs> i actually did post something on one of his things once one of his uh, or I comment on one of his posts and i said um <clears throat> i i i almost when i was in high school because I read this story where Rob Bottin, the guy who did the effects for the thing, oh yeah, um, he had sent Rick Baker drawings, and to kind of uh, I don't know to see if Rick Baker might hire him as an intern or whatever or an apprentice, and Rick Baker did it. And uh, wow. so I was in high school and I read this article, and I was like, uh, in fact, it was it was in um, not Fangoria, uh, Cine Fantastique. Yeah, kind of and they did a thing on the they did a whole article on the thing and Bottin's you know makeup, and that's why I read this. And so I was like, I'm gonna do that. And uh, I almost did it, I kept thinking about it because I was seriously thinking about going into effects makeup. And uh, so, anyway, I told I sent him this message and said, uh, Yeah, I almost sent you drawings when I was in high school, but I decided to get into comic books instead. And uh, <laughs> he sucks actually, to be you, no. <laughs> And look what it could have been, man. And uh, no, he actually responded. He actually liked it, the message. So it's like, hey, me and Rick are friends now. <laughs> yeah, that's how Twitter works. That's how it works, right? We're buddies. He liked my uh, comments. So that's the beginning uh, sequence to every stalker story. 
Yeah. <laughs> it probably is. Uh, I'm speaking from experience. Aaron said, hey, your mom is named Martha, too? <laughs> <laughs> I saw him at San Diego once, walked right by him outside, and it didn't dawn on me who it was until we'd already passed, or I would have uh, grabbed him and said, you're my idol, sort of. <laughs> um, I did I that uh, uh, with uh, uh, Alex Ross. Sat there in t uh, Chicago, had a whole conversation with him. Didn't even realize it was it was him. <laughs> that was uh, like because he it was right after he cut his hair, so I was expecting like a long haired guy. And uh, he we were just at the plate at the eating hot dog, you know, at the commissary or whatever. How's the con going for you? Oh, good, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Have you see what's his face? Oh yeah, yeah. All right, check it later. And then uh, I get back to the table, and the guys started with like, "What'd you guys talk about?" I'm like. What? Who? You know, <laughs> you and Alex Ross. I was like, "What? Are you, talking about? Are you kidding me?" He's like that guy over there. I was like, "Dak." <laughs> you know, he was like at the height of his popularity at the time. Oh my goodness! Yeah, probably best I didn't know because it would have been like, "Oh, oh Mr. Ross." <laughs> he came up and uh, talked to me at my table back right when he was just, I think. Um, was it San Diego? And it was right after Marvels came out. He was walking around, stopped by, and we chatted. Maybe it's because Shelly was sitting there. I don't know. That's probably why he came. Right. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Big yeah. notorious horn dog, that guy, you know. Yeah, well, you know. And uh, so, actually, now that I think about it, maybe that is why he came over. Uh, <laughs> is but... that documented, Kelsey? Is that? <laughs> no, I, that, it's exactly probably the opposite of that, honestly. That's what <laughs> He just saw that out there. <laughs> he just seems like kind of, you know, he stepped out of the 50s or something. Like he seems a little straight laced, a little clean guy. So, yeah. Don't I met him in his, his long hair days when he was before he was famous. And, and I mean, re, really famous. And he was gushing. I was inking um, Nexus at the time. And he was a huge Steve Rude fan. So he was like, total fanboy so it was kind of an odd like the next nice. time i talked to him he, he, it was a shorter hair days when he was super famous and he <laughs> he, had a, good? No. <laughs> he, he was no longer impressed with you is that what no, you're saying? exactly yeah. <laughs> you mean you you don't still ink nexus oh well, never mind then <laughs> <laughs> only like the current work yeah He's like, why are you wasting time with that little presty guy? <laughs> oh, uh, Aaron, you have a super chat. What? I'm sure it's not me. <laughs> sure well, let's, let's check. Uh, Anchor Fist for $5. Thank you, Anchor. Appreciate that. So none of you had the stones to draw a kaiju. Oh, well, I'm going to draw a gigon with the chainsaw hands. Uh, yeah, that sounds way too complicated for anything that I'd want to tackle. Uh, yeah, I know about that one. I'll draw that one when I'm done with the Predator. I yeah. know what a Kaiju is. What's a Gigon? Gigon is, that's like one of those Godzilla villain monsters. Isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we're all, yeah, we're all waiting for Kelsey. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> that, was, that was really helpful. Thank you so much for participating in today's show. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. A, a, a giant a, turtle or something. But. A gugon. That's what I use to get rid of, like, you know, gugon. <laughs> sticky stuff. <laughs> Old tape. Gugon. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah hell razor is, is correcting us he's saying guy gone oh mm. <laughs> not that stuff you got in the garage i have to read this comment from blackjack okay, okay. go ahead um, well, let me stop you unless it's about me uh, yeah i just want to <laughs> make it clear this this is not mine. It's coming from Blackjack. Okay. Uh, it's about Israel. 
<laughs> what are you doing to us, Gary? What's about to happen? Okay. Uh, I used to take my ex-wife to San Diego Comic-Con with me all the time. I got all kinds of free stuff because of her. Mm -hmm. Then... She gained 250 pounds, and I didn't get anything. <laughs> uh, that's not how comics works. That's how the world works, my yeah, friend. Yeah, right. <laughs> comics, right? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I forgot. He's got, like, I was giving him, never mind. Did He'll... they Did they make a re they remade the blob, didn't they? Yeah. Dude, it's a great remake. Who's in it? Nobody. Oh. <laughs> Some guy called the uh, the Blob, I believe, is on. No, no, Steve McQueen, that's for sure. No, it's a uh, uh, the, there's a the the woman in it uh, had gone on to kind of moderate success. I forget her name. Um, uh, I see, seen her around, I'm sure, but um, yeah, that was a that was a really good. That, those are the guys that did. Uh, I believe it's the same guys that did Monster Squad. Did the Blob? Or no, 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 no. It was. Uh, it was uh, written by the guy that did Shawshank. Um, Seriously? What's his name? Yeah, this is and and the guy, uh, the director he used to work with, um, Darabont. Well, Darabont, yeah, wrote it. He was, uh, yeah, he was the writer uh, of the Blob, uh, the remake of the Blob. I can't believe you've never seen that. You got to check it out. It's freaking I'm great. To think if I have, that's what I was. I... I, oh, it's classic. No, yeah. where's you know when the old there's the old bum finds the the blob and he put pokes it with a stick and it slides down his arm. That's the original, right? I, that's in the uh, they have a I think they do that in the remake too. Um, it's pretty much almost exactly the same, just updated. Um, All right, hang on a second. I'm going to have to look it up. <laughs> for some reason, I'm mixing uh, War of the Worlds. Was McQueen in War of the Worlds? No. Who was that? That was Gene, uh, Gene, um, Ray, not Gene Rayburn. <laughs> yeah, for some reason I'm I'm mixing up somebody, my movies. Somebody help me out. The um, um, oh, McClure? No, no. no. Matt McClure was all of Edgar Rice Burroughs movies in the seventies. Um, yeah, those are great. Oh, who was the? I know the guy's name was Gene something. Here we go. The yeah, I know. I know Gene Wilder and the version. No, of the no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm looking at the Blob remake, and I have not seen it. This doesn't look familiar to me. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, but uh, who's the director? It's a he worked with Darabont. Uh, and I keep forgetting his name. But these are like the best movies. These guys. Uh, these are my favorite Darabont movies. Yeah, it's see, like these see, Caesar, Charles, says, Charles uh, Russell. Russell. Charles Russell. Chuck Russell. Yeah. Gene Kelly, Gene Siskel. <laughs> Gene Siskel. <laughs> yeah, John Smith got it. Uh, Barry. Gene Barry, yes, thank you. Acting role. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was in the original <laughs> War of the World. Gene Siskel in War of the World. <laughs> the Blob, one of the best remakes of all time. See? <laughs> Bibbly Bob says Gene Therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Con Air director remaking the Blob. He direct Chuck Russell directed uh, Con Air. No, no, that was Simon West or uh, Dominic, uh, whatever that guy's name is. Yeah, Simon West, Dominic. It's so close. No, Chuck Russell did Eraser. He did The Mask uh, with uh, Jim Carrey. Oh, Wait, Eraser um, with Schwarzenegger. Yeah. So he's kind of like hit or miss. Like sometimes he does fun stuff. Um, but like you know, he's not like a David Fincher or nothing. But um, his stuff he did with uh, I think he I think didn't Darabont and Chuck Russell also do one of the Friday the Thirteenth pictures? I think they did the one with the the Warriors, uh, you know the the Dream Warriors. That was yeah, that's Freddy Krueger though, isn't it? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Friday the in that front. No, no, no. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, <laughs> I'm confusing all my uh, stuff. <laughs> Yeah, those guys did all those like cheesy B movies back uh, before they became, or at least before Darabont became Darabont. Yeah, he worked on all those like cheesy B movies that were fun. Well, everybody did. Like James Cameron started off doing Piranha 
two electric boogaloo or something. Yeah, well, that was taken away from him. I mean, his first real movie was Terminator. Come on. <laughs> yeah, are you serious? They took uh, Piranha away from him because he's being too. Old. Yeah. Was he being? Yeah, too old? yeah. It was it? It was working for like he's probably taken too long being perfectionist. I don't know. Cause I, uh, apparently how he got the story, uh, how he got the movie was, uh, he was on the set of a Roger Corman flick and, um, they, uh, the producers of, of the Piranha films were stopping by that day and he had to have like maggots, like, uh, move on cue, like in this shot. Cause he was shooting like second unit. And uh, they were like, how is he going to get maggots to move on cue? So he rigged up like an electrical plate underneath it. So when he hit said action, they hit the little button. It l electrocuted and all the little maggots started dancing around on cue. And the producers saw that and were like, holy crap, this guy's good. <laughs> so they got him to direct Piranha. Or Piranha 2, rather. But I guess... Uh, I guess they took it away from him. <laughs> it's like, dude, this is schlock. You're you're wasting our money. But that's when he came out with the idea for Terminator, though. Apparently, um, you know, well, he was Harlan Ellison. He I was it. just about to say he was, you know, sick reading a book, Harlan Ellison book, and uh... <laughs> was that a discussion we had on this show last time? Probably. I think it was. F Harlan Ellison, man. I ain't giving yeah, that I, guy I nothing. <laughs> All coming back to me now. <clears throat> yeah, Chuck Russell. That's funny. Well, that name sounds familiar now, so that would be why. Because I've seen a lot of those movies, but I did not see the Blob remake. Interesting. <clears throat> That's probably his best one. Really? Yeah. Well, it's like the, oh. I get those guys confused with um, the uh, uh, the guys that did Monster Squad. Um, which uh, the writer also went on to greatness and the director kind of floundered. Um, okay, so now I gotta look that up. Sure, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it, it's uh, Shane Black was the writer. Oh, uh, okay, Monster Squad, you know, Shane Black, of course. And uh, the director is the he, that guy went on to do uh, Robocop 3. The, the oh, worst. I can't. Wait a minute, which one of those was Frank Miller involved with? Is that Robocop 2? Two. Two, uh, two, probably and three. There's ninja robots in there that had to come from Frank Miller. Isn't it funny how Frank Miller just has not been able to translate the film? I mean, every time he gets involved in writing or directing, it's garbage. And yet he does these really cool comics. It's uh, Aaron Caleb yeah. Reynolds saying huge shout out to Aaron. I got my Blood Hunters you know, a week ago. Thoroughly pleased. The three stories are great. I really awesome. like lizard dinos as well. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Now they're talking about Tom Holland. Now, Tom Holland is interesting. Birdman Bird brings us up. He directed Fright Night, right? And he also gave us Chucky, which was well, a Tom horrible. Holland was that kid uh, that plays Spider Man. Well, yeah, there's that Tom Holland too. Oh. But this was be this is before that Tom Holland. There was this Tom Holland. <laughs> he he directed Fright Night, which was I still think the best vampire movie ever made. And uh, <laughs> uh, then he did Child's Play, which was maybe the stupidest movie I've ever seen. And yet it turned into this colossal franchise, uh, unbelievable. And then. I don't know. I know he's directed other things, but nothing that was of any significance or maybe even any good. So it goes to that old saying that like every everybody's got at least one good idea in them, you know. We used to have this theory that like all the all the greats um, had three in a row. Um, well, not not like you know, not like well, even David Lean. I was just about to say, like even even goes like to David Lean. You look at like his. Of course, you can look at his whole filmography and be like, "Oh yeah, this guy's badass." But he did Doctor Stravago, uh, uh, Lawrence of Arabia, and uh, Bridge on the River Kwai, like back to back. And so that's, that's like the good. three Pete. Um, who do you, you got? Look at um, uh, John McTiernan. He did Predator, Die Hard, and um, uh, what else? 
uh, Hunt for October. Was that McCain? Hunt for Rod October? Freaking great. Yeah. Um, that's like probably his best. Um, yeah, but you know, what's interesting. Spielberg went, uh, I don't know if you can count Sugarland Express as being great, but he does Jaws, he does Close Encounters, but then he does 1941 and Tango. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I remember true. being extremely disappointed in that. He was close because then he follows that up with Raiders, but uh, which saved his career because 1941 almost ended his career. He's kind of an anomaly, though, because like a lot of the guys I mentioned, those are the three best movies they have. Spielberg, on the other hand, had another 12 or so great ones after yeah. that one stinker, you know? True. So, like, he's kind of an anomaly, but um, Kubrick is another anomaly. Like, everything the guy has done has been great. But, like, uh, who else was, uh, who were we thinking about? Um, uh, the three, three in a row. Oh, like, uh, what about Tim Burton? You know, he did uh, beat. Uh, Pee Wee's uh, Big Adventure. Pee Wee's Big Adventure, Batman, and uh, <laughs> what came after that? Well, no, he did Beetlejuice. He did Pee Wee's Big Adventure, Beetlejuice, and then he did uh, Batman, I think, after Beetlejuice. Okay, after there you did go. <laughs> did you do Edward Scissorhands before Batman, or was that after Batman? Uh, probably, probably after, I guess. I, yeah. I honestly don't remember. His best film, in my opinion, is uh, Ed Wood. Oh, oh yeah, that, that good one. Yeah. I, I like Mars Attacks. <laughs> oh. yeah. So, is that what the other one got? They use they play Slim Whitman to make everybody's head explode, make all the aliens heads. Yeah, explode. yeah. Which is a, they totally ripped that off from something else. I I just saw. Uh, what was that? Oh, it was the it was the the clown movie. Uh, uh, well, the killer, killer clowns from outer space. They did the same exact thing. <laughs> really? Yeah, so, yeah. I don't think it was Slim Whitman though. I think it was something else. Um, Dale A is, is Dale A is bringing up uh, William Friedkin, French connection, yeah. fist and sorcerer. There you go, Friedkin got his three peat. Although I love to live and die in L.A., that's not in it. Well, his, you could argue far. sorcerer may be a great film, but it wasn't a successful film. No, it wasn't. Well, I don't. It doesn't have to be necessarily successful, but like has gone no, on. Like, look at point. a. For instance, uh, 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 a great example of this, I, I think, is Ridley Scott, you know, who did Alien, uh, uh, Blade Runner, and what, Legends? Uh, <laughs> Legend with Tom Cruise. Tim Curry as the devil, though, so, you know, there was... Well, I love that movie, actually, but it's not a... It wasn't... A, none of those were commercial... Well, Aliens was commercial success, I guess, but... I... I, I I'm not a big Ridley Scott fan. I mean, I recognize the movies he did that were good, but he's very hit or miss for me. Do you like his stuff more when he was more the visual artur or when he started doing like popcorn flicks? Like, uh, uh, what is it? Um, he did Gladiator, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Gladiator, kind of a popcorn right. uh, flick. Well, that's like way after the fact. What I was saying is like he was doing all these like really weird art. Full movies, and then he did, and then he switched gears and did uh, 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 the one with the ladies that jumped off a cliff. Um, oh, Thelma and Louise. Thelma and Louise, yeah. Well, yeah <laughs> he did spoiler. Thelma and Louise. And that, yeah, and that kind of changed his. Uh, oh. Yeah, spoilers for like a forty-year-old movie at this point. Um, Is he the one doing the new um, Napoleon film? Yeah, yeah. That should be coming out soon. Are you guys going to see that? I want to see it based on one thing, and they were like, "We don't, uh, we don't like how the French are portrayed." And, and Ridley Scott says, "Oh, something okay, like, then I'm there." Ridley Scott says something like, "Well, the French hate themselves, so <laughs> so I'm going to do what I want." You know, <laughs> like what do they know? They don't even like themselves. <laughs> I was like, "Damn, yeah. I might have to check this out." <laughs> yep. Yeah, there, there is some real like animosity in europe between like the french and a, a variety of other uh yeah uh countries it's well really the british love to give hell to like the french and the germans because i was watching uh that oh, show germans. top that the show germans top gear top gear i was thinking of that when you when you started when you brought they, up the topic they would give Germany hell any chance they got yeah. about the war. And I'm like, right. was it that was like 
a long time ago. Generations have gone by. <laughs> you see faulty towers when uh, yeah. John Cleese says they have like some German guests and he's, I guess he had a concussion and he's, he just like goes off and does these Hitler impersonations. <laughs> I don't remember that. It's hilarious. There, uh, the Germans are very sensitive about that. You know, you can't. Uh, and the British love harassing them. About it. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty funny. No, it's it's like they're he's talking about all this, you know, World War II stuff and and Hitler and the the German guests are getting really you know agitated and they finally mm -hmm. said stop. Stop talking about the war. And he said, he said, I'm not talking about the war. He says, Yes, you are. You <laughs> you you start talking about it first. Then he said, uh, no, I didn't. You invaded Poland. <laughs> oh god. Uh, oh, it's true, they did. Um, <laughs> Oh man. Uh so anyway, we were talking about what movie we were talking about. We didn't yeah, don't, no, I'm thinking it? about John Cleese now. Oh my John Cleese. Uh that you thinking like? about um changing the subject. You were talking about I think this was last week, Aaron, about you had a job before comics and you ran into someone at school that you used to go to school with and oh, God. <laughs> what job was that you were doing i was do you know the sunset corridor gary out here where yeah, epson yeah. is and all those you know they have yeah. all the manufacturing plants down, down, uh 217 yeah yeah i um or 26 I, yeah yeah 26 i i came uh i came back from film school right and uh was thinking that i that wasn't going to work out and i needed to i was going to get into comics and so i'd done a couple of low budget comic book jobs while i was still in LA. skin flicks <laughs> oh, no. wait a minute uh, i'm supposed to talk about that but um so you know i, I i had I, I moved back home which is pretty humiliating when you're 25 years old right and uh so Kelsey's like, well, I'm still living at home. Yeah. Try it when you're 25, 32, 48. No. <laughs> like many different times I've moved back. <laughs> right. So I was, yeah, I was 25 and I come back from LA and I was living at home and being not like the younger generation that feels it's okay not to work. I felt like I had a job. So I, I was, but I had no real job skills because I it was you know film school, you know it's like yeah what are you gonna do uh, take tickets at the you know the the local theater so um, I be so lucky yeah now I did yeah and I um, so I was like getting like uh, intern uh, not intern jobs but placement jobs right you go to like a uh, one of these uh, places where they, they, what are they called? Now, I can't even think what they're called, but they would, they basically go in there and they find you jobs. And I, oh, temporary, temporary, temporary yeah. Temps, yeah. And when I did a little bit of that when I was in LA and I got these great jobs, oh, you're working at a law firm for three weeks. I'm like, yeah, or you're working in, you know, these right. experience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're, you're going, you're wearing a tie and all these thinking, hey, this is actually like a real job. Well, that, at, when I came home, I was getting like, yeah, go to Payless, and we walked around in a circle and picked up cassette tapes to put into a display. So you had this big box in your hand, and there was pallets of uh, cassette tapes, like the Beach Boys' greatest hits, and then, you know, whatever would be on this pallet. We literally all day walked around in a circle and put tapes in these boxes and filled up these displays. For job department. security. Yeah. It was horrific, right? So I finally got this job <laughs> working at Epson. And it was like picking up cardboard. So it was basically a trash collector at Epson. So they had all these uh, conveyor belt lines where all these mostly women were putting together, you know, whatever printers or, you know, whatever. And uh, I would, and so all these parts would come in in the boxes and they dump the boxes along the, 
the conveyor line and I'd have to wheel out there with my big cart and pick up the car. <laughs> yeah. So I'm back there and, I'm, and it's, you know, we, and we had to do this every like 20 minutes or every 15 minutes, something like that. Right. And so I'm looking out and there's this, um, there's this uh, tour going on and it's, they're basically you know, having these other executives from other companies like touring the manufacturing facility. Right. And I look out and here's this guy who was like one of my biggest, I guess, rivals in high school. Uh, he was a year older. Couldn't stand the guy. A fine rival. Well, he was an athlete. We both played basketball and he was uh, constantly giving me crap my entire high school life. And um, well, you deserved it. Um, no, I didn't. It was just, it was, um, but anyway, so here's this dude and I see him in his suit and tie and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's, you know, I'm not going to name his name, but, um, so, oh, I'm they're going, I can't go out there and be seen, you know, as this garbage collector, uh, this guy. and if it had been anybody else, you know, and, um, <laughs> so I'm sitting there, but it's like I had to go out because that was my job. And it was like, you know, the boxes are, you know, piling up, you know. And the last thing I wanted them was over the intercom, Aaron, get out there and pick up the guy. You know what I mean? So I was like, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to suck it up and I'm going to go do it. And so, of course, I had to walk right by with my cart full of uh, cardboard. And uh, <laughs> I'm buying all this. I'm rich, don't you? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and so he sees me and he just has this S eating grin on his face. He's like, Aaron, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> he said it was Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Aaron, and, how's um, it going, man? <laughs> I just, what could you do? What could you say? I just said, that's going good, man. Going good. <laughs> <laughs> just. And he was just laughing, and I was, oh, I was, I went home and called uh, Bobby Chase at Marvel, just begging for a job, uh, save me from this. And uh, eventually, I hooked up with a commercial art studio. And then, of course, when I was when I had moved out and was actually working, never ran into anybody I went to high school with. Was only when I was living at home and uh, taking these odd jobs to get by that. Uh, because I have a, a similar story. It's not as uh, painful Pathetic. as yours. Oh. <laughs> when I, one of the jobs, I was thinking about all the jobs that I had before I got into comics. One of them, when I was still living in San Jose before I moved to New York. I worked for a packaging company and I delivered packaging supplies like shrink wrap and, you know, tape and stuff like that. Yeah, and I had a big order that I was delivering to um, an IBM um, plant, and this was San Jose, you know, Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. and I had a bunch of stuff that I was delivering to them, and I couldn't find somebody to sign for it, and because it was too big, or they wanted to check it, or something like that, and so they all, the guy says, "Oh, let me get my boss," and his boss was. The, the guy who was a year ahead of me on my basketball team in high school. Wow. <laughs> Same thing, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> You're the boss of this department, and I'm delivering tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the worst, man. <laughs> hey, yeah, there was he a was, need. Yeah, he, had a, he was wearing a suit, you know, and I had jeans and a T-shirt and... <laughs> Yeah, well, it you sound like you had the best out of the deal then. No, no, having to be in a suit every day. It should be well, that, that, to be that, you, pal. That's true, but yeah, in terms <laughs> of money, I'm sure he was kicking my tail. Yeah. So, anyway, what I was thinking of that is is John we had trying to as we were thinking about getting into comics, you basically do whatever you can so you can draw at night. Um, yeah, so I did, I did it, everything. Did David have any of those kinds of jobs? I did tech support at Microsoft uh, on the phone in the middle of the night so I could draw comics and then I'd have drunk people call. 
Uh, I've worked at a, as a projectionist at a movie theater. That's not bad, actually. That would be fun. Yeah. I sold a exotic birds, uh, <laughs> exotic bird place. <laughs> yeah. I've literally done everything. I've worked at Sam's as a cash register guy uh, at the cigarette aisle when they sold cigarette. I don't know if they still do that, but that's that's what got you hooked on smoking, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that was it. Uh, Sam's, I blame Sam's. Uh, Old Sam Walton uh, worked on the dock unloading trucks uh, twelve hours a night, and then went home drew comics. Yeah, I poured concrete. Oh I, yeah, uh, so you know that hurts. Uh, even when I was 19, it hurt my back. I couldn't imagine those guys were lifers. And I was like, dude, how are you not crippled at this point? Uh, um, some of them are. They're just tough. I, uh, yeah. uh, I don't complain screwed, about it. I literally <laughs> screwed lids on horseradish during the swing show. <laughs> what? And I did it for, it was at Beaverton Foods. And I did it for um, like two nights. And it was one of those temp jobs again. And this guy comes up to me, the, the supervisor, and he goes, uh, we're not going to need you tomorrow night. And I said, good, because you couldn't pay me to come back. And uh, he just laughed. He's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, there's probably like oh, ladies that have been doing it for 30 years, sitting on that line going lightweight. Yeah. <laughs> but here, here's an interesting story, though, where something come, kind of comes full circle and it kind of works out. I um, now this of course I was only nineteen or no actually I was I was tw I was twenty I think I was going down I was going down to film school I just got accepted but I was working that summer I was working at um, you know uh, uh, Reese's Fine Foods Gary over there on right. by Costco yep. the yep. big plant I worked in there and as a summer job and it was uh, we were like making. Um, potato salad and macaroni salad and jello parfaits. So you're in this like cold control. It was like 40 degrees in there the whole day. We had, we started at 5 AM and it was like, it was like intense labor because you're lifting up these huge pallets of this, these ingredients and different things. And I mean, it was a real backbreaker, but so I did that for the summer. And one of the, uh, I had this date with this chick and I was supposed to meet her, and there was no cell phones back then, right? And so I, I get off my ship, and we'd, we'd had, you know, I said, okay, well, I need this much time to go and take a shower or whatever. And uh, so I was going to meet her at whatever time it was. Well, I start to leave, and the guy grabs me and goes, hey, where are you going? And I'm like, I'm off. And he goes, oh, no. He goes, we got an extra uh, order of, like, fruit parfait or something that has to be packaged today. And I'm like, what does that got to do with me? And he's Sucks like, to be you, yeah. yeah. He goes, it's mandatory overtime. I go, mandatory overtime? Basically, yeah, okay. you did it or you got fired. And so I was like, so anyway, I ended up late for the state. But so. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's not exactly what I was expecting. I was like, <laughs> he's going to show up to his date going, yeah, I just quit my job for you. Honey. No, no, no. I <laughs> Something no, like he that. did. He worked his full shift and dumped her, right? There. Dude, I needed the money. What can I say? But, so, so anyway. <laughs> Aaron said, I ain't washing dishes for nobody. <laughs> so now you go, you know, fast forward, you know, 30 years or whatever. And I'm working for DC Comics. And this is right at the time, the New 52. And there was a Washington County uh, hist uh, History Museum. And there's one over by Rock Creek Campus of PCC. I'm saying all this because Gary knows where it's at. I know the rest of you guys are like, I don't know what you're talking about. But so they had this this history museum. And they got this younger guy who was a um, uh, he was in charge of like booking uh, exhibits and things like that. And he was trying to do something more interesting than you know, it's Lewis and Clark again. And so okay. he uh, he contacts me because I was doing a signing at a comic book shop, and he you know he saw it in the newspaper or whatever. And said, hey, would you be interested in doing uh, like a show of your artwork at this history museum? So we did this whole thing. The whole museum was full of my artwork. And uh, I did a lecture on the history of comics, you know. And so I started from the very beginning, you know, Martin Goodman all the way up to modern day. And then after that, they asked me to, to speak at this fundraiser. And the, for or it was a fundraiser for the museum. But it was at the house of the Reesers that owned the the Reeser 
fine foods, right? It was like his daughter because old man Reese apparently had passed away. So I'm up, you know, I'm up in the West Hills in this just luxurious house. And, you know, they have this beautiful Japanese garden that overlooks the city, you know, they're up on the hill. And I go up there and I tell this, tell this story that, it, that, so now here I'm the featured guest speaker at this fundraiser, having all, had worked at her, uh, uh, for her <laughs> back when I was 20. And I told the story about the mandatory overtime and got some big laughs. Um, <laughs> when you're like rehearsing that speech in your, in your head the night before, just like, I'm, I'm going to tell them. <laughs> no, I, I I went up there and I was because they wanted me to explain you know, how comics were made and all that kind of stuff and uh, you know so I brought some artwork with me to kind of explain the process. But I said before I get started, I want to let everybody know that uh, I actually have a connection <laughs> to Red Shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I told the story about the mandatory overtime that I you know, learned the meaning of mandatory overtime by working at Reesers. And, uh, so it was a good time had by all. But it was really bizarre because I had like politicians, local politicians coming up to me and giving me their card. You know, if you ever blah, blah, blah. And I'm just kind of like, what What do I need? To, you know, we got to, you know, how they is thought, it? They thought you were somebody. Uh, yeah, it was really kind of funny. But uh, and I talked to that uh, dwarf lady that was in, in that movie that or not the movie, but the television show, the um, big little people, big city, little people or big. Uh, it's filmed in Oregon, but it was a family of dwarfs, and it was like a uh, um, reality TV show. So okay. she was there. I actually talked to her. For Not quite familiar. A time. Interesting. She's like, David, don't ever do a reality TV show. I'm like, David, wow, did you have any awesome. odd jobs before comics? Uh, before comics, no, I had some dirt. Sixteen. What's yeah, that? he came out like out of the gate, firing you know both barrels. There were some dry times even during then where I was like, oh, I gotta get another job. But right before, like I was I was working on independent comics and stuff, so they weren't paying much. So I uh got Wait, a job. what independent comics dude were you working on? Say again? What independent comics were you working on? What for yeah. it was something for Derek Robertson? Got he did Space Beaver. Oh yeah. Are you in that? Yeah, I did a little bit. Um, that was a great one, man. I like and that. And then uh, I, I did some other comics for Space Beat. I forgot the what Jim Smith. That was one of my first books I did was Tommy and the Monsters, but that none of that matters. Oh, the side jobs that I was doing is um, I used to drive semis from one station to another that was across town just to get fueled. Whoa. Did you um, have to go to like school to learn? No, yeah. they, they just threw me into the deep end and I was driving everywhere. <laughs> like, the, the the keys. Keys. Second and third gear. I, I wouldn't go past that. I was, uh, <laughs> uh, weird as hell. But then when I started getting used to it, when it didn't have a hitch on it, it was just the. Um, you you were whipping around corners. I and was. Yeah. But my my the supervisor saw me do like almost like a donut, just like <laughs> in, in the grease that was on the ground. He's like, "You can't be doing that," you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't know how to prepare for that because when I was coming up, I dressed nice and I had the newest jeans and all this kind of stuff and jackets and all this stuff. So I went to work dressed like that, and then it's gonna get me dirty. Home, I'm like, it's all jacked up, oily, and smelling like gasoline. For like weeks on end and stuff. I was, that was terrible. So I didn't last there long. I couldn't take the smell. And the um, physical labor stuff for the birds. It is. It is. <laughs> um, working crap is. Yeah. You know, this is real work. Um, I worked at a Burger King and I worked at a. I think I, I worked. Never at, worked I, no, I worked at Diamond for like a. Two weeks or something like that. Was, oh, man, wow. really? Yeah. But Did no they one. fire you for stealing comics? What happened? <laughs> no, I, I was getting to that point where I, I couldn't even look at a comic after working. <laughs> I was like, I wasn't stealing jack. <laughs> is that like is that like working at a pizza parlor? You can't like you can't yeah, steal pizza anymore. Pretty you know, much. I'm pretty much. But I find it interesting that no one has mentioned their. Um, experience in the entertainment field in the early days before comics um oh here we go some stuff on the internet Aaron, we can go. You pull up I my screen it. i felt it. 
Our vaudeville oh, days. Uh, here we go. What do we got here? <laughs> right, wait a minute. What's happening? I was working on here, I thought, Kelsey. I thought what Kelsey was going on here. Before you even trucked in, I thought Kelsey, <laughs> Kelsey's own nuts were squeezing. <laughs> Yeah, it was this old show. Look uh, at that. Look at that. <laughs> Savelt Kelsey in his 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 leotard days. <laughs> That's when my beard was nice and trimmed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And David, do you remember when you were skinny? No. <laughs> Here we go. God oh. Dang. <laughs> You're like, oh my god. <laughs> What the heck are you doing with your leg? <laughs> I, I'm winding up for the super kick. What are you talking about? <laughs> Somebody <laughs> give that boy a sandwich quick. <laughs> you know, yeah, when, when, I David, lived, when I lived in Ethiopia. No, just, yeah. <laughs> you know, David said he had hard times, man. He wasn't kidding. Yeah, yeah, right. to be free Sandro and she. Uh, yeah, I did those shoes. Are. I did those And shoes. of course. Oh no, Aaron was a a, a spokes model for for Nair. <laughs> oh yeah, man, I can smell it from here. <laughs> Boy, that's not far from the truth. Oh no, it was almost like Graham a little bit. That was never that bad. Man, man Wolverine ain't got nothing on you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> or so, uh, <laughs> Henry Dermick has been waiting it says uh the amazing gary martin <laughs> can you please ask aaron will graybeard's 50th episode be original star trek villains no voting allowed <laughs> henry we already tried that and you guys voted it down well you have to do like uh category one star trek villains category two star trek captains category three star trek whatever you know, right? would probably win <laughs> have to drop picard Old Dirty Fatty is asking, in all caps, Pike. in all caps, is Kelsey doing a drawing of my mother-in-law? Oh, <laughs> mother-in-law <laughs> joke. <laughs> my, apparently, uh, markers uh, don't handle brush ink very well. I, I thought you were like doing that on purpose, like the flesh tone was. I am it. now. <laughs> well, I thought, wow, he's using that. <clears throat> I'm trying to. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to make the best out of it. Oh. How do you get to color so fast? I mean, it just blows my mind. I'm drawing the blob, and I'm still inking. Oh my god! Look at the uh, Ken ink. Jackman. <laughs> I'm not familiar with Ken. Ken Jackman. Yes. My nephew got mad at me. Uh, hold on a second. My nephew got mad at me. Little kid called me a Dewey hole. I'll let you decide what part of the male anatomy Dewey is referencing. That's a new one on me. Do we have to? I mean, so, is, that yeah, is that like, now we're not opening that up for discussion. Well, I think Dewey oh, hole. That's a, yeah, that's a new we got a we got a uh, a little mom and pop breakfast joint uh, down the road, and they sell this breakfast sandwich that is amazing, and it's called the Dewey. And uh, <laughs> is that named I, after someone that works? I somewhere? put it in my hole. Uh, oh, <laughs> you put it in what? I, my face hole. You know, it's oh, okay. a breakfast okay. sandwich. I so I, uh, that's a Dewey hole uh, for okay. a time. Yeah, uh, forty percent. Zed says I had an office job, and at first, wearing a suit felt adult. Yeah, but yeah. the novelty wore off rather quickly. Yeah. <laughs> no, I liked going to work with a tie on because I felt like I had a real job. You know, and it was like, hey, I'm doing something. You know, I really <laughs> Pedro Ang says my first job was moving pharmaceuticals from Colombia. <laughs> His second job was as an inmate uh, at a federal prison. <laughs> Made uh, license plates. Geek so. Avenger says first job was a janitor, second job mover, third job bingo caller. 
What? Wow. I'd like that. Yeah, yeah. I'd be on roll now, man. <laughs> Listen yeah. to all of us old guys now. Bingo caller. Yeah, that sounds good. Hey, I'm, I'm going to be into that. Good yeah. job. <laughs> Henry Bemis had a job uh, as an Avon call in an Avon call center. Imagine de dealing with Avon ladies all day. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah my mom did that. Sounds hot. He's yeah. good. Side, side all day long. All day long. <laughs> I was uh, I was answering phones at a law firm in LA called uh, O'Melveny and Myers, and I was in, in this big like they had this like a phone tree I guess it's like this round table with a big uh, center pole on it right and all the phones were connected into this line and then we sat around and it was just me and a bunch of women. Uh, answering the phones, and they were all so like business like, you know. And uh, I was like cracking jokes with people that called in and stuff, and they were like, You can't do that. And I'm like, Why not? <laughs> yeah, you can't be worried. Worried. yeah, and uh, so yeah, I was uh, you were like in a sewing circle then, uh, yeah, exactly. And it was, but it was only for you know, all these jobs were like temporary for a couple of weeks, you know, because someone was on vacation or someone was out sick, or you know, and uh, I was at some place with this guy, I was this dude's uh, I was like a male secretary, but I didn't have to wear a dress, which was nice. <laughs> and the guy would come out, but and there go, are other male secretaries have to wear dresses, that's weird. Uh, I don't know, um, today they do. But he was like, uh, he'd like come out and go, uh, I need to get a lunch appointment. If you hook, you know, set up this lunch appointment at one o'clock and blah, blah, blah. And a restaurant. So I'd be calling restaurants and stuff, you know, set this guy up for his uh, power lunches and things. It was actually kind of. Uh, <laughs> Angela what? Curry worked at a call center for H&R Block. Good grief. <laughs> She's commenting on her own job. <laughs> Uh, good grief. Yeah. <laughs> that was Bert that said good grief, but that was you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The the call centers were the were the worst, man. Because like they the one that I was at uh, for Microsoft, we, we were on the clock. So as soon as you as soon as you dial into the to the system, you immediately start taking calls. Do MSN. And you're gonna be like, thank you for calling MSN. My name is Kelsey. I'm gonna help you today. <laughs> and so I I get there early and just sit in my cubicle and just stare at the desk, like trying to get into like some kind of zone where I'm like <laughs> I'm gonna be doing this every second for the next six hours. Let me get into the zone. <laughs> Getting into the call zone. But that's when I when I started working nights, it was great because like the the thing wouldn't beep uh, every you know, uh, three hours or so, but it would be like some drunk guy going, I can't turn my computer on. How do I do it? <laughs> well, sir, I'm just here to help you get online. Why? You don't, are you dumb or something? You can't help me? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's another department for that. I don't have time for this shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you called me, sir. <laughs> and I'm drawing comics like the whole time this is going on, you know? <laughs> I had my one of my roommates in college. He got a job at. Uh, he used to crack me up. He'd come in and tell me these stories. I, I like. I just couldn't believe it. He was working at like J.C. Penney or you know one of those department stores, right? And he was in the customer service call center, and he would get bored, right? So he'd start messing with the customers, and <laughs> they would like. He had this. He had this um, one guy would call and he'd go, "Okay, well, sir, I need your." Uh, I need your card number. And the guy would read the card number and then he'd read it back to him wrong. <laughs> he goes, so that's uh, uh, five, nine, seven, six, right? And the guy's like, no, 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 no. Five, five, three, four. Oh, okay. Five, six, three, seven. And he'd go, <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> and he would do this to entertain himself. He finally got fired. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm like, I like Sean. You can't do that and not expect to get fired. I mean, it was so funny, but I could not believe. And he and uh, yeah, what's your name? Um, you know, it was like and he said it was some Japanese guy, and he said it was like, um, you know, Miyamoto or something. And he'd go, Hirohodo? 
And the guy would go, no, 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 it's right. And he would do these type of things until he got fired. <laughs> Was this pre-internet? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we just went and got drunk missed, at Black Eyed Pea on lunch. Frame. Yeah. Oh, it was just, I was cracking up. Never did anything like that. Because he was doing stuff like this. That sounds like way more fun. I should have done jobs yeah. like that. <laughs> I always took them seriously. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. No, well. <laughs> the good old days where irreverence was rewarded. Well, not really, but <laughs> by your friends, because we'd all like, that's hilarious, man. Go get fired again. <laughs> what else are you going to do? Yeah. Call him a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll teach him. <laughs> that'll show him. Uh, dare you. <laughs> Creative Fay wants to know, Kelsey, have you ever thought of doing a Muppet spinoff of Shank since you like Muppet face, draw Muppet faces all the time? Oh, taking a shot at you, man. That could like be a, yeah, like a puppet of Shank. Of, yeah, <laughs> puppet villains in in Shank. Uh, yeah, there could be a a, a Shank or a, a puppet characters. <laughs> I guess. Oh, there is one actually. Donald uh, is a character, and uh, Donald when Donald first showed up. Uh, he's the he's the chef of the of the food shark. This local hangout where everybody hangs out in the in the this, story. This isn't based on Donald Delay, is it? By yeah, the... Donald Delay. Yeah. Donald used to come in, uh, used to come on stream and stuff with a puppet. And really? so I had this character who's he works uh, at the food shark, uh, but he talks through the puppet. So people would be like, uh, Shank, uh, Hank, well, before he becomes Shank, he's like. I don't want that nasty thing touching my food. And the puppet's like, hey, what am I gonna do? He's the only guy I got cooking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that so yeah, uh, that's yeah, crazy. Donald. Who would be lame enough to put a puppet, go on a puppet with a live stream? You had that within Did arms. You, look reach, at you <laughs> with an arm's reach of your drawing table. Look at it, blinks too. Look at that. <laughs> that's wow, next that's level, great. baby. Right there. Yeah. Roman says, I worked drive throughs at a Taco Bell in high school, and to clear oh, wow. the line of cars, I tell people we were out of meat, so they would just leave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to work anymore. That was you? <laughs> oh, man. I was starving that day. No. Yeah. While I was in high school, I, I would get jobs uh, with some of my um, teammates sports teammates as as referees for like girls um softball and basketball and stuff like that and when you're playing uh first base umpire at a girls softball game you call everybody out so the game would end faster <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's something we we discussed before the game you know <laughs> let's let's Just everybody in the game. first part let's of call this everybody game. out <laughs> and then we go grab a beer all right deal <laughs> a friend of mine and i were uh <clears throat> we went up to the grade school that we used to go to at least that i went to because they'd have open gyms like on saturday and stuff to play ball and i think we were sophomores and uh there was this girls basketball game going or at least they were standing around and um we were kind of watching going, well, how long is this going to take? You know, because we had our we had our balls under our arms and all. When I say we had our balls Hello. under our arms, I mean our <laughs> basketball. Thank you for that mental image. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it was like the Kelsey picture. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so this dude comes up to us. He's wearing a tie or something. He goes, you guys basketball players? We go, yeah, play up. And, you know. <laughs> and he goes, you guys want a ref? Our refs didn't show up. And we had never ref before, you know. It's so like, how much does it pay? You know, they'll like, oh, give you 10 bucks or whatever. I'm like, yeah, okay. Wow. We're out there refing this sixth grade girls game, and the parents were unbelievable. Oh my gosh, yelling at us and stuff. <laughs> what, what did I, you do? Do? I used to referee girls' high school basketball, and it was the worst because all they do is foul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can't you can't call all the fouls otherwise they'd just be shooting free throws the right. whole time so you have to decide what not to call right 
and that's so be pretty everybody, severe. everybody gets mad. I mean, yeah, the coaches and the parents, and yeah, I mean, they just lose their minds. It's just because you, you can't, you can't, you know, call everything. It's almost but, like like yeah, trying to read the chat. You can't read everything. Yeah, they're, they're, they travel. These were sixth grade girls. They were traveling constantly, you know, yeah, so we yeah. had to kind of like. You, you have know, to let it slide. Yeah. Yeah. And people are, why did she just walk? What are you doing? And we're just like, <laughs> the guy told us before the game, he's like, look, you got to let some stuff go and kind of pick and choose your spots. We're like, OK. We thought it's it was different good. now. Girls sports is different now. But back then, yeah. it was just like the Wild West. I mean, you, <laughs> <laughs> it, was. And it was crazy. The funny thing is, we it came down to the uh, last shot of the game, and this girl, uh, somebody shot and they missed, and this girl got the ball, and then she jumped up to shoot. I mean, she left the floor, and somebody was guarding her, but they never touched the ball. She just jumped up and then came back down and then jumped up again and made the shot, and we had to call traveling, right? So we called traveling on the game-winning shot. <laughs> <laughs> Parents, we, Super Bowl we were lucky we didn't get out there. They were like going to burn us at the stake. And Angela Curry once said, "I want to see Aaron yelling at a parent." <laughs> I gave a guy a side glance because he was just constantly yelling the whole time, and I finally looked over at him, and his wife hit him in the arm, you know. But it was so funny after the game, all the girls that were on the winning team came up to us and were like, you guys were great. You did a great job. Thank you so much. And the girls that lost were like, you guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it was brutal. Oh, it was you fun. should have called it like exactly like, oh, no, we're going to every – if the game has to be won by a free throw shot, that's what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so should have made them like the good lesson opportunity there, you know. I remember oh, no. my friend, the guy told us, he goes like, you know, don't call three in the key. Give him like six seconds, you know, give him six in the key. So my friend literally called six in the key on one of them. And somebody in the crowd goes, six in the key. Do you guys even know what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine ha having to umpire or referee a referee a, a girls tournament. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was, that was tough. Oh gosh, yeah, the good old days. But they were—I mean, I was still in high school when I was doing that, and so there were a few girls in this tournament that I had my eye on. Boy, I blew my <laughs> opportunity there. Are there male referees in the WNBA? Probably. I don't know. What's a good know. question? I never. Probably. No one watches. No one knows. They're probably all alcoholics. <laughs> 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 Hey, they're failed refs from, uh, high, you know, that that's where uh, Gary and Aaron could have ended up if they yeah, kept, they kept going. The WNBA right teaching, now. Yeah, teaching girls soccer or whatever, you guys, oh. baseball. Could have ended up there. Basketball. That's yeah, what it is. Funny. That's what we're talking about, right? Basketball. Yeah, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We don't want to throw everybody off talking sports or anything, but. Uh... Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Were you one of those guys in gym class that was like, uh, we have to climb that rope? What? Oh no, I, I, I'm, I've made deals of like how to get out of it. I was like, hey, I'll go stack all those balls up on the thing after they get done playing. If I don't have to climb that rope, and the teacher, <laughs> the coach was like, deal. You know, <laughs> I would always like bargain, you know, to do anything else other than sports. <laughs> Like they would just have us like running and running the track, and I'm like, I don't want to have to take a shower and all that. So can I do anything else? I'll balance your books, you know. Like, what do you got? I'll do anything other than that. So that's how I got out of stuff. That and I ran like an unusually high temperature, so I'd always go to the the nurse and be like, I don't feel good. And she'd take my temperature and always be like 90, 98, 90, or 99.1, you know. And she's like, Oh, you want to lay down? And so, it would like, be conveniently during like math period and things like that. Go, they're playing murder ball in PE. I really don't feel well. <laughs> well, no, on, on days where they played dodgeball, I was there. That was like, I was there, man. I was there for stuff like that. <laughs> well, we used to, the girls used to hide against the back wall because they, and we would just like, we would all like target the girls standing back there, <laughs> <laughs> nail them. Dodgeball was like, at least when I was a kid, was that's where the guys 
got to demonstrate how strong they were or like how dexterous. So they we'd be doing like crazy spin moves to try to throw the ball as like fast as possible. And, and it, we we wouldn't feel satisfied unless you'd hear that, Ow! you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. the well, yeah, yeah. Ow! <laughs> or especially when they jump and you hit them in the leg and then they go falling. Mm -hmm. oh, that was the best. Oh. You just felt like such a man. Oh, well, yeah. I'm and a grown up. As soon as somebody went down on the floor, they just got bar a barrage of, uh, you know, pelted yeah. by like 20 <laughs> different balls at once. <laughs> they're, they're kind of hollow musical bell sound the ball made when it. Boom. When it yeah. <laughs> I broke yeah. my arm playing uh, uh, dodge dodgeball. Ball? Yeah, I had um, I had like this cyst in my uh, my arm that was basically a hollow spot in my bone, and so I I threw this ball as hard as I could, and my arm literally snapped in half Goodness. when I threw it. Whoa! And I went down to my knees, going, "Oh my gosh, my arm!" And I just got pelted by about twenty <laughs> 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 the broken arm. These guys are just get <laughs> that guy; he's injured. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that's oh, like man. the that's like the craziest humble brag I've ever heard. I threw the ball so hard, I <laughs> broke my arm. But then they pummeled me when I was yeah. on the ground. Well, no, it, I mean, I literally, I had a hole, in, and it was a. It was really uh, – I had this spiral fracture. It was just – I mean, it didn't, like – it didn't break Jeez. through my skin or anything, but it was it was pretty gross and pretty painful. Kelsey, Nate313 yeah. says, make the blaster a dodgeball hitting predator. <laughs> uh, wait. Make... <laughs> Boink. Oh, like this is like – Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that sounds like work. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You'd have to – it's a good idea, but what I'm color? I'm done. I think I'm done now. <laughs> what, color is the, what color is the uh, the blob? Is he uh, is he green? No, he's he's a whole bunch of colors. Like if you look, he's like pink, but purple and green, like human skin, right? <clears throat> yeah, it's everything he's digesting. Oh, or it's gross. he's black and white. That's gross. <laughs> Wasn't the first one black and white? Yeah. Well, yeah, but he felt kind of like he might be. Not that orange is my power color or anything, but it kind of felt like <laughs> orange. It's to um, follow through with my previous statement about reading chats about me, <laughs> uh, Furious Comics this says Gary Martin. That's it. That's Gary Martin. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, that's something, right? Oh, okay. Further down, he says. Gary Martin, do you think Aaron should draw Godzilla? <laughs> I do hate I think Aaron should draw Godzilla? You mean you hate after Godzilla? Says this? I hate Godzilla. Why? <laughs> what do you mean? But Are I you hate, being serious? Yeah. yeah that, as much that, as I hate yeah, manga. It is known that Aaron hates Godzilla. Wait a minute. That's Godzilla, weird. let me tell you something. Godzilla, he has a cat. His face looks like a cat, and he has thunder thighs. Why would anybody want to draw that? It's the worst design character I've ever seen in my life. Ah, is that how you yeah. draw him? I don't I've know. Said <laughs> I've said it. It's my piece. Stick into it. Okay, Aaron. Wow. Heads up. Torchbear Studios. Yeah. I'm not familiar with Torchbear Studios. The blob itself was made from silicone with increasing amounts of red vegetable dye adding as it absorbed people. Hmm. So there you so, go. So red. It, it's reddish orange, right? So I'm, you know, yeah. yeah, it's Chinese red is basically what you're talking about. <laughs> and that's what I'm going oh, for. that's what you're getting at. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm going for. So uh, I see Kelsey, you're going with your new power color green. So I'm. I get. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Was that my new power color? I forgot. It is, yeah. I thought it was Henry blue. Thurn, Gary Martin. How do you keep your upper body so steady while you draw? <laughs> Years I will never time. reveal that secret. <laughs> um, how much time we got? Good question. Um, no well, I'll be done in about 15 minutes. So. <laughs> Factor in your own uh, math at that point. <laughs> Where's my brush at? 
Angela Curry says, oh, no, deal breaker. Aaron, I love cats with thick thighs. <laughs> That's too spelled thick. T-H-I-C-C. <laughs> you didn't know what that means, but... Uh... No, I just uh, I Godzilla, always, man. I've never heard anybody didn't like Godzilla. I not only do I not like him, I hate him. I was rooting so hard for King Kong to beat his. <laughs> That's true. I have to admit, any of the King Kong versus Godzilla films, I always rooted for for Kong because he's marked. <laughs> I, I wrote it for Mecha Godzilla. Like I always wanted the the robot to win. Where whichever one was the robot, that was the one I wanted to win. Oh, it's not Godzilla, right? Yeah, I think didn't they ever do? I think I f keep remembering like some sort of Mecha Kong. Uh, yeah, but I can't remember what that was from. Do you remember? Yeah, it was one of those Japanese uh, Godzilla. Yeah. So I was rooting for him. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I I liked like. Uh, Ghidra, I thought was cool. Um, the smog monster. The smeg monster. Smegma monster. Wait a that's no. Schmagma. <laughs> um, yeah, you didn't you didn't dig on Biolante, the big monster plant. Yeah. Wait, was there um? No, I mean I can't. Even, I'm, I was thinking something else. No, I don't think I'm aware of who that is. Biolante, yeah. Um, Gamera. What about Gamera? Oh, he's a turtle. He that was the turtle, turtle one. Turtles. I'm a turtle guy. <laughs> I don't even think that was related to Godzilla at first. They brought him into that. I think it was like its own thing. Yeah, they had their Gamera. own movies. Like, uh, right? Wasn't Ghidra King of the Monsters? Wasn't that a movie? And then Rodan was its own movie. Probably. Uh, I like uh, what's what's the one? Um, it's not a Godzilla movie, but it's a, it's one with giant apes running around. Um, God, what the hell was that called? Uh, it's like it's like Gigantor or something. No, these were ridiculous. They were like uh, what was that called? Um, the, was this the, another the, Japanese monster film, or was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Gargantua, like yeah, yeah, sounds... Battle of the Gargantuas, or something yeah, like that. that. Sounds... Those guys that were like fighting in these ridiculous, yeah, things. hairy, like you they look like the ghillie rivers. suits. <laughs> Fur was flying off of them. And... It's they were ridiculous. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, ridiculous. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, we would go to uh, Kmart, right, and they had this like in the camera section. They would have these um, boxed, like, Super 8 movies of, like, you know, Rodan or whatever and, you know, Godzilla. And you would buy – they were, like, they were, like, they were like 10 minutes of – or five minutes of, like, the clips from the movie. Um. And you'd take them home and watch them on your Super 8 projector. And we used to think those were the coolest things ever. And Super now, eight projector you had you were watching yeah. wow yeah. because that's what we did home movies. That's the only way we could have home movies was uh right super eight films. And so you, every everybody had a super eight movie camera and a super eight projector. So well, mine never my, I inherited mine from my family, but it never worked. I always wanted it to work. Super eight. I still I have it somewhere. I got a t well, I collect cameras and I've got a bunch of so do I, yeah, eight millimeter movie cameras and 16. I got a 16 millimeter Bolex that's really ah, oh, with the does it have the changeable the rotation lenses? Does it yep. have one of those? Ah, I've always wanted one of those. They're, oh, I think they're probably cheaper now than because I don't think anybody uses that stuff anymore for any reason. Uh, there's all kinds of new because of the battle between digital and and uh, analog. There's a lot of new stuff coming up. Like uh, there's a way you can. There's a people that sell like um, film scanners now that you can like have at your home, so you can like do your own film scan uh, and edit digitally. You know, if you wanted to. Because, I mean, I can imagine uh, shooting has got to be one thing, but then editing on film, 
That's gonna be crazy. You gotta have a film editor. I got a Super 8 film editor. Um, oh, really? Oh, yeah. Man. It's really, it has a little, it just has a reel on either side, right? That you uh, put your two spools on. And then it did runs. That, did you have to cut the down. film and tape it together? Yeah. Yeah. And then it has these two little, it has this little uh, uh, project or a screen in the middle of it. So you just run the film, hand crank it through, and you can see the. I used to have dreams about that. When I was a kid, I used to go and rent all the filmmaking books and uh, learned about uh, 16 millimeter. And I'm like, oh, I'll just shoot my film on, on 8 millimeter or 16 millimeter. You know, I'm not thinking nobody's ever done that before. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why don't they use that? You know, they should use that more often. I never understood. Well, down in Portland, they used to have the. They used to have the. I don't know if it's still there, but they have the Portland Art Museum. But right attached to it was the Northwest Film Study Center. <clears throat> and when I was nineteen, before I got into film school, a buddy of mine went down there, and we took this sixteen millimeter filmmaking class. And they had sixteen millimeter cameras that you could borrow and go shoot your film. We shot this twenty minute film, and this guy was such a laid back hippie that was teaching the class that. He never explained how to use. We had they had like several Moviola old Moviola uh, editing right. machines, and <laughs> you can use it if you can figure it out. Good luck. <laughs> well, that's exactly what he said. We're like, can you like show us how to use these? He goes, and he literally said this. He's like, and he had long beard, hair, long hair, and he's like, nah, I'm too tired, man. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, Dude, just just buy this book, and so we had to buy a book from that's him great. on how to use the the. Uh, editor so we read up on it then we went in and edited this film and we were the only people in the class me and this friend of mine that actually finished our film which shouldn't be surprising to anybody because everybody takes that class but when they actually have to do something they're like <laughs> they just take it as an electorate you guys wanted to actually yeah, learn yeah. this stuff oh, right. yeah <laughs> there was a lot of pseudo intellectuals in the class and they were always talking you know getting out their pipes and uh, talking crap, and then they'd never do anything. Yeah. Well, apparently, uh, we're now they do it on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> we're putting Jimmy Reyes to sleep with all this uh, interesting camera talk. <laughs> well, you know, Jimmy. Uh, know. What would what would Jimmy like to talk about? No, oh, yeah, Jimmy. What do you want to talk about? Cuban food. Yeah, I've never eaten Cuban I'd food. I'd like to. I'd actually like to talk about Cuban food too. Never had it. Never had Cuban food. Spicy. I think. Uh, oh no, I have had one. Uh, the Cubano, like a sandwich. I had one of those as a street food in Austin. Does this? Yeah, what was it? Huh? What was in it? Oh, I don't know. They just called it a Cubano. It had like some kind of like you don't different know kinds what of meat. Was. No, Some I don't know. Yeah, and it was like pressed in one of those like panini presses. Um, had all kinds of stuff in it. I don't even remember, but it was good. <laughs> A cubano. <laughs> that that was one of the best things about uh, Austin. Uh, there is uh, lots of good street food. Food trucks everywhere. Yeah, and you right. get like weird stuff too. Like you can get like Thai Cuban fusion, you know, in a food truck. <laughs> Weird stuff like that. We had good. We had good food trucks here in Portland. If you don't, you know, take a chance on getting shot to go down and get something. <laughs> yeah, I always think food trucks are sketchy. That they don't have to follow the same kind of hygiene rules as restaurants do. Well, you know what they're doing though now is that they have a lot of these things that are like food uh, cart parks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They got like yeah. six or seven options. They're almost like their own little restaurant. Yeah, I, I have one of those in my neighborhood, and I'm afraid to. Uh... Oh, dude, you got to. Don't be afraid, Gary. Don't uh, be afraid. Random. You're gonna Nick, die or something. Nick yeah, right. Rand <laughs> Randerson. Legend Rand has Nally. it. Legend has it. No one has seen Gary Martin draw anything. He just concentrates, and work appears. Yeah. Drawing board <laughs> by magic. <laughs> That's exactly my system. I've never heard the chat so much. I didn't think we had this much talking going on. Oh, yeah. And chat, uh, suddenly they're coming alive. Well, well talk about he, Gary, though. Yeah, that's it. Gary never reads the chat. That's the thing. And then they start uh. talking about him, and suddenly he's like, whoa. Hey. 
Uh, you like these people now. <laughs> yeah. You scared Jody says the minorities that run the places frighten Gary. <laughs> the minorities in Portland, Oregon. Uh, you mean like in the food truck? Uh, yeah. Classes. Those are uh, less lesser white people than normal white. Is that? No, hey, there's this place down on Hawthorne, Gary, that there's like a cross from that Burgerville there on Hawthorne that there's like this food truck court. And they got this place called Chicken and Guns. And <laughs> it's dangerous. <laughs> but it's so good. No, it's it's basically uh, uh, roasted chicken and uh, like you get like a whole chicken. And 45. Comes, <laughs> wait, and 45 to defend yourself while you eat. And uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> they have like these big, they, like they chunk up potatoes, like and then they they oh. fry these potatoes. Oh, and they have like dipping sauce. It's so good. Oh, that sounds good. I'm yeah, getting hungry. Good. Um, yeah, how much oh, time we got left? <laughs> yeah, how much time to go? It's a, it's too far of a drive for me to go very often. But Henry threw in his answer your question, Kelsey. Gary Martin mm. is the only one who cares about us. Um, <laughs> and, uh, Today, it seems. I mean, I, I didn't even know you existed until today. <laughs> yeah, Kelsey's like, this show's live? You what? mean you could have been reading this stuff all along? <laughs> <laughs> what is this strange thing you call chat? <laughs> uh, let's see. We got about, uh, let's see. I've got about seven minutes more. Of you, you've got about, yeah. How much time does uh, David have left? Well, David's too, yeah, it's till next week. Yeah, um, week. <laughs> good old wizard sleeve says there's a place up here in Michigan, cops and donuts. I like. I that. would. I would. I would go there. Two yeah, great tastes that go great cops, together. Right? Oh, yeah, cops. Oh, okay. <laughs> what do you think they said? Cox. Oh, okay, yeah. Cox and donuts. Yeah, Cox and donuts. Well, it could be a chicken place, you know. Uh, Chicken and waffles, right? Yeah. See, I'm getting, I'm getting it from both sides. Uh, Random Nick Randerson says Gary Martin only knows how to read his own name. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and Richie, maybe. Richie Dupe says Gary holds the show together. So no, two, two not. opposing schools. I wouldn't go that far. Yeah. It's not <laughs> Push it. Oh, hey, uh, while we have the, a full audience here, if you guys, if you would uh, be kind enough to hit the like and subscribe button so this channel can grow and, and can become not only the most popular draw stream on the internet, but the most popular draw stream, well, I guess, you can't give us bigger than the internet, can you? So I guess, yeah, just help us maintain our status as the most popular draw stream on the internet by liking and subscribing to this channel, even if you don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you don't like it. Especially, there's probably more of you that don't like it. So, really, do us a favor. Uh, Angela is saying that EVS left a message. I missed it. How far? How far back is it? He didn't put Gary's name in it, did he? Yeah. No. See, that was, the, that was his failing. Yeah. That's how you get red around here. Help me out, Angela. Got a pony up to the boss. How far uh, <laughs> is it worth reading? Well, see, Malin, Malin came in early, so we saw him. Yeah, we saw him right away. If uh, Ethan came in late, you know, he just, it's, it's hard. Gary's, Gary's, Gary's. Yeah, I miss, I miss uh, more messages Gary. than I read. Gary's That's, only one man. For sure. He's only, what can you expect? And he's an older gentleman, so it's even more difficult. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. We're lucky he doesn't have to get up and go pee every five minutes. <laughs> Where's Gary? Oh. <laughs> Spam. We'll be back in a few minutes. Yeah. No, actually, I. that's one of my superpowers. you like a camel? Yep. <laughs> he actually is. I was bugging him about that one time at a show. I was like, dude, do you ever go to the bathroom? He's like, why are you focusing on my bathroom habits? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. How do, you, how do you remember this stuff? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just, just remember giving you a, a bad time about it. You were like, 
why are you so focused on this? I'm like, Siri, I've got, I'm like, I'm pissed like 10 times well, today. That's true. You go to the bathroom a lot. You're like, I, I wasn't focused on it, but your reaction to that question makes me very much wondering what the hell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Angela, Angela um, got back to me about my question. She says that Ethan says he misses Kelsey. Oh, wow. I'm right here. <laughs> he said that yesterday on his show. Yeah, he does. He's 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 really uh he's really saying how he wants you back. Back on his show? Yeah, like on Kings or something. Oh well I'll probably go there. I'm real busy. But I, I'll get on that Kings coloring. eventually. He's drawing stuff, he's coloring and drawing stuff. I'm like more busy right now than I've been in a in a minute, and I'm always busy, but um just trying to uh get stuff out there. I can't get it yeah. out there fast enough, quite honestly. Yeah, and that's the thing that people don't realize. When you're a freelancer, you, you're you constantly spinning plates. You're, you've got so many projects going on at the same time, and you you can't concentrate on just one. You're constantly jumping around. And Well, you know, and I, I help my mom out around here, so that takes up a lot of time just – you know, making food and going shopping and all the various like daily life stuff. Um, you gotta right. keep the gators out of your yard. Yeah, and, yeah. and when you, when you're set your own schedule, things you know, real life is easy. It's easy to uh, get distracted by, you know, oh, the you know the the gutters need to be clean. You know, I'm gonna Gutter. take a long lunch break today and sweep my patio or i mean it's just so wow. many things that can interrupt yeah i don't i don't really there's not a whole lot of free time honestly there's a whole bunch of people that were uh wishing me happy thanksgiving i hadn't hit up any of them so i got a lot of phone calls to return a lot of emails to reply to <laughs> i'm kind of behind on everything that but that's typically my routine is about this time of year i've dipped out until the new year <laughs> i'm like i'm out I, I go through a hibernation cycle mm. I'm, i've been uh, making I'm, it a point to stick around you know that's, not, that's uh, the bigfoot hibernation cycle yeah Anybody i'm trying i mean i've been here more lately than i've been around in, in years so that's right. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, quite honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should watch Greybeards. I'm always here. Uh, there seems to be a theme in the chat now. I'll just read a couple. Uh-oh. Rita Faye says, Gary, 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 the Martin Gary, Gary. <laughs> he doesn't drink fluids. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 and Aaron, there's there. another following that vein. Uh, there's a super chat. Following that vein, um, <clears throat> John, for $5, thank you, John. What you don't realize is Gary has been peeing the entire stream. <laughs> <laughs> they don't call it a stream for nothing. Yeah. That was a double entendre. <laughs> All right. I got to get some better white out. My best stream, I timed it, was 120 <laughs> seconds. I'm serious. That's two minutes of, of constant flow. Well, you know, <laughs> when you hold it that long, gee. No, not, I don't hold it. I just don't have to go. I've had moments like that, but it was not constant. It was like a bloop, bloop, <laughs> bloop. There was another one. <laughs> the bladder of a water bed. Or something. <laughs> yeah. What happened to my Presto pen, man? This place is a mess. I can't find anything. That's something. I, another thing I've been very busy doing lately is uh, uh, I'm changing my office uh, from one room to another and trying to organize all my art supplies because right now they're like some are to my left, some are to my right, some are under my desk. So I'm trying to get them <laughs> to where I can grab everything just really easy on a table next to me. So I'm having to reorganize everything. Uh, and that's taken a minute. Uh, <laughs> Aaron, what is the time situation? Why are you so obsessed with... Uh, He's got a pee, Aaron. 
<laughs> he told it for you. <laughs> Why am I so obsessed? This is the first time I've asked that question. Oh, you do it every week. What's of the course time? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, the time is when I'm not finished. me. Who? When we're fit, <laughs> when I'm finished, we're done. That's the time. <laughs> yeah. What? It, no, I just say that because. David and Kelsey are not watching you. They don't know when you're about to finish, so they well, need I'll to know how much time is left. I'll let everybody know when I'm done. <laughs> I, I was done hours ago. I, was, I, don't, I don't think I'd call that done. I'd say there's a difference between being done and stopping. Okay. You can't base it on me because I've already done three of them this show. Uh, <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Phantasm, Gremlins, and Predator. Okay, right. three. Phantasm's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> and Aaron and David are drawing like five portraits. I'm drawing the blob, dude. It's not a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough said. I'm drawing the blob, dude. <laughs> I'm drawing the blob, dude. The end. Okay, sorry, I didn't realize you were the captain of your debating team. At school. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, two minutes. How's that? Okay. Is everybody happy now? There you go. I can color my other ones then. Yeah. <laughs> Got two minutes. Well, all right, I can do a whole little drawing. <laughs> yeah. Any other monsters I need to draw? Apparently Godzilla. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Draw a ghost monster from Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> it was in a movie. So. Ah, <laughs> man. Now you say that. Should have done that. It's easy. Just look up a ghost monster. This this might be the biggest mess I've ever done in my life. <laughs> I don't know. You were like, this is supposed to be easy. What happened? I, I just, I wonder if, I feel like I'm kind of on an acid trip at this point and just going, what the heck is this? Uh, we'll find out. Uh, Kelsey sabotaged you. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he was laughing I didn't mean at. to, but it worked out that way. That was... <laughs> he was laughing his head off. That sucker. I know. <laughs> Oh, got your ass. <laughs> I just wish I had thought of that. That would have been like been like a mastermind. <laughs> yeah, I had a totally something, a totally different idea. I was gonna draw uh, Oliver Reed and Curse of the Werewolf, and then you suggested this, and I went, hey, that's a pretty good idea. And now look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Success. <laughs> I could have I could have been done with Oliver Reed an hour ago. Yeah, I think you should have gone with the splatter and not the color. The splatter? What? Yeah. What uh, do you mean, like a like a for uh, the blob for the blob? Splatter. Oh, just a big splatter of it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There you go. There's your blob. Yeah, but then <laughs> yeah. Have, yeah. you got your blob right here, pal. Yeah, you got your blob. blob. I Actually, just, it, it, it's. Um, we haven't seen a close up of it, but it, it it looks pretty pretty cool. It's pretty tricky. probably shouldn't color over my other drawings, but I'm doing it anyway. So it's seeping through the uh man, I literally can't find anything. Where's my toothbrush? <laughs> <laughs> now I need my toothbrush for splat. So is this dude who's getting dissolved? Is he like freaking out because he's getting dissolved or that he sees his hand? Well, that would freak him out because his hand is not dissolved. The rest of him is. He's, he's obviously, where is my tooth? He's like, so I still have a chance. <laughs> yeah, right. okay. okay, Henry Jeremek, Gary Martin, all caps. <laughs> so you guys are getting the hang of it. Can you please tell Kelsey, all caps, to consider adding some blue to the Predator's energy blast? Thank you. I was, I was trying. I don't blue. Uh, let me see if I got a blue bright enough. I was trying to get like a really intense blue, and then it just turned into mud. I don't know what happened. 
You should probably start over. <laughs> well, that works just on the yeah. outside. Yeah. 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 Beauty. Yeah. Henry, are you uh, appeased? Yeah, how's that looking? Good. I like it. All right. I still had time to spare. Yeah. Easy, oh. easy correction. <laughs> well, we still got uh, glacier. Uh, sorry, Aaron. No, no, I was just saying we still have at least a minute. Okay. Glacier Mountain mm -hmm. Comet says Gary's first food truck was a stegosaurus. Where's <laughs> 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 uh, the cannonball? Uh, <laughs> hey, you know what I say? You don't cannonball people for telling the truth. <laughs> oh, where did that start? Uh. I know, right? I feel like they've been pretty honest with you, and they got cannonballs <laughs> and nuclear bombs and all kinds of things. I don't think you've been listening very close. <laughs> I don't understand this, Bassmaster Dan. If Gary Martin was a shoe, he'd be the most comfortable moccasin in existence. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I think he's saying you're old and wore out, I think is what he's saying. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I think it's a pretty good assessment. I think you are kind of like a worn, comfortable moccasin. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to. I don't know that I should, but I'm going to. Yeah. Hurry up. On the lay. <laughs> I like how David's like halfway finished. He's like, yeah, I'm done. What are you talking about? <laughs> I've been finished. Yeah. You're halfway finished. That's not done. <clears throat> That's show done. That's what he calls show That's done. Right. Frankenstein <laughs> <laughs> looks done. <laughs> All right. Okay. I guess that's it. Show's over. Good night, everybody. Thanks We're for joining. Calling us. it. Um, all right. We're gonna see exactly what thing I've created here. Five. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it's like you don't even know. You're like, let's see what the hell I just oh. did. Is yours dry yet, Aaron? No. Um, but it doesn't have to be dry. Look at Kelsey. His he just keeps on uh yeah, there's, so, there's so much marker on this, it's like sticky. I know you're like smearing <laughs> it all All right, here's uh here's my blob. Oh Woo! the dude in in that odd shape. Is extremely cool looking. I like the color. I think some you need to do some stuff to the guy on the inside to make it really sell. Maybe it's because his line art is so dark. So dark, yeah. It has to be knocked back more. Yeah, this is like it's not finished, but I can see the potential of this. You get his hand all done where it's like the you know the flesh tone to really can make you it pop. Paint like that Chinese red over the blacks and let it just knock back. Yeah, yeah, if you well, use a gouache, some of it, so it's it, yeah, it's graying a little bit, but I see what you're saying. I mean, yeah, it needed to be. Um, I probably should have done it like in gray all the way through. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you probably could, yeah, make him darker, uh, and that'll work too because he's he's inside like you know the blob and shadow. Right, and I need more contrast like... between this hand and this color. That's why I was going to color yeah. it green, but I saw you going green, and I was like, no, nah, I don't want to go green too. Um, but yeah, darker color would have really maybe some purple in there that'll work. I like the color. combos. Hold on purple. A second. His flesh is is getting you know dissolved, right? Yeah. Right. Yet his eyeball is popping out of the socket. <laughs> <laughs> it's hanging on for dear life. Man. Yeah, that's right. Those are the last things to dissolve during. Yeah, that's what I hear. That's, <laughs> that's how I plan it. But yeah, some purple, uh, purple, uh, warm purple tones going into like a cool purples, you know, in the sh deep shadows would probably work well with that oranges and yellows and stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Maybe even some greens to like counterbalance the purples and the oranges. Just very little bit of green, not much. And yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd add more red to that skin tone. Like you, you're the one that told me red skin's red. Well, yeah. I mean, that actually, this is colored pencil, actually. Oh, okay. And then I, I was going to color pencil the whole thing just to kind of mix it up, but I thought it's going to take me way too long uh, to color that blob in. So I went with the uh, the cheap watercolor set from uh, Hobby Lobby. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it always please. comes down to blaming your supplies. Exactly. Uh, I've given yeah. those up. Now I'm using dollar store markers. <laughs> So actually, it is a little bit darker than it's showing. It's showing a bit washed out on the screen, but uh, yeah, if I if I uh, if I get motivated, I'll work on it a little bit more. Uh, let's see what. <laughs> Before uh, you go on, uh, Aaron, you have a request from Henry Thrun. He's asking Gary Martin, all caps. Please ask Aaron to give me a wrench. Um, make a just make a note. You don't have to do it right now. Henry Thrun. Wants a wrench. Okay. Just write oh. it down. Oh, well, okay, Henry. That depends on your review of, of Blood Hunter, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he just posted on Twitter that he's going to review Blood Hunter. So we'll see how that review goes. Yeah, there, there, you go. Go. there you go. Tit for we'll that, so to speak. <laughs> You're on a probationary period, it sounds like. Yeah. Uh, Eric P says, uh, Yeah, it's not great. Just send it to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, Glacier Mountain Comics says Gary Martin's social security number is zero. <laughs> <laughs> He's the first man, yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah, god! Yeah. All right, let's see what uh, Kelsey. Kelsey's got quite a uh, quite a bit of stuff going on here. What do you got here, Kelsey? Uh, I'm still noodling. I can't help it. <laughs> All right, there's uh, the first one I did. Uh, my no, skin stones are coming is out. Is that stream. the first or the second? No, that's the first one. Yeah, oh. I did this uh, quick phantasm uh, doodle. Um, uh, got that one done. Did a terrible uh, mogwai. Dude, uh, you didn't put the smoke in his mouth. It would have saved it. Oh, uh, what man. Hanging out of there. Big stogie. But he's yeah. supposed to be the shadow of the gremlin back here, which came out very poorly. So gave up on that one real quick after I finished it, of course. Of course. Uh, and, <laughs> and then went for the uh, the main uh, show here. That's of awesome. Predator. Um, I'd probably not to exact movie uh, specifications of my gun and whatnot. We're focusing. <laughs> that gun um, looked like the Keaton Batmobile. Uh, yeah, it kind of does, right? A little bit. Wow, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I don't know what that's all about, but I got I got even got some like alien writing on here. Um, even though he's got a little hatch that covers that up, I figure what the hell. Um, yeah, there you go. Trying to get some weird skin tone action going that has like every color that I had mm. purple, green, red. It's like skin iridescent. Tone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not even sure what color the armor is. Is it like gray? Is it green? Is it dark green? So, that's, I just, yeah, that's a good, yeah. I, I just did never get a good view of it. I think it picks yeah. up colors too. Yeah, it flex colors. Sounds like so you, you go. a lot of excuses for Kelsey's. Uh... <laughs> Well, you know, heads up, guys. Um, Henry Bemis is wanting to know when the next auction is after the holiday. Yeah, it's not going to yeah. be Christmas. Everybody's already broke. <laughs> yeah, though, there you go. Well, there, yeah. uh, top three for sure. All um, right. My favorite let's take spot. a look at what Mr. Williams has done for us. Look wow. at Frank. Can you imagine what that looks Whoa. like? Frank looks sleep deprived. You're getting really good at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like Wolfman. You got the big stubby nose. He's got the hair. <laughs> you did a nice job are. of uh, capturing Karloff's likeness in that Frankenstein. Least in I always movie. liked uh, Invisible Man. I mean, even though he's just bandages and, and, and sunglasses, I always thought that was creepy. So I think you're, you're nailing That's good. That. Yeah. yeah, I do. I, I like the Invisible Man too. It's a great iconic image. I, I was like thinking about doing it. A... <laughs> I was trying to make it like those Marvel corner box art. Oh yeah. So I was going to say Universal Monsters below, like right. Oh the yeah. Banner plate because I did it twice, and I didn't like the the composition stuff. There's so. like no sketching with this guy. He's like out for uh, blood sure. every time. Uh, yeah, another the... one. That wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> that Frankenstein looks a little goofy. Actually, you know, that that actually is a really good idea to make that like a, a Marvel corner box. And like you said, put Universal Monsters down there. That's great. Yeah. I make a great uh, like locker poster. Yeah. Remember those like tall locker posters? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Wow, you're right. Or a bookmark. Make a bookmark out of that. So there's probably like another, you know, six or – I could do like two more of these with the other because there's other the other stragglers of the Universal Monsters. And yeah. they're all different teams or something like that, you know. I'll do part two of this next week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you can make a print out of that or something. That'd be cool. Yeah, right on, man. You going to paint it? No, hell no. Oh. <laughs> Them days is gone. <laughs> what? Uh, Short-lived. <laughs> I know. He's got, he's got real jobs now. Oh, yeah. okay. Spambot says uh, for five dollars, always entertaining. Good night. So I guess he's leaving before us. Oh, we well, we're gonna shut this place down. Spambots have got to be here till the last man goes. Man, they got to Spambot spam leave, leave before you read that. I guess so. I wonder. That's interesting. Uh, Henry Thrun says, "Looks like Frankenstein got the vax." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie's got his third booster. Uh, <laughs> I love the the uh, the what's his name um, creature from the Black Lagoon and the Wolf Man. Those guys, just, they look great. I want to see them team up in something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah buddy movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you remember that? Uh, do you remember the um, the Marvel book Legion of Monsters? It was uh, uh, yeah. It was Ghost Rider, Man Thing, Werewolf by Night, and Morbius. And you're like, who's controlling this team? Yeah, <laughs> these guys are right. definitely. Yeah, who's the captain? Right. Yeah, exactly. Who's giving the orders and who's listening to the orders? <laughs> exactly. Nobody. Yeah, so. they would just argue through the whole story of, you know, of who was in charge. <laughs> Did you just add purple Attacking to yours? Him. Huh? You just added purple to yours? Yeah. Cheater. Oh yeah, I see. Wait, yeah. <laughs> cheater. Just, you know, you guys told me this this isn't good enough, Aaron. Do better. So, <laughs> I, don't, I don't recall anyone uttering those words. <laughs> That's what you were thinking. Yeah, you were like, that looks greater, and all he heard was That's, it looks terrible. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is not good heard. enough. Um you should have hey, a little yeah. mist coming out of a, out of the guts. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like a green mist coming out of the guts. Oh, see, look at all you guys. Why don't you just do it for me, David? You know, more people. Add more people. I'll help you out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take a second here and uh, remind everybody that we all have like campaigns that are rolling along here. Um, I have, of course, Kit Carter Planet Doom graphic novel. I think there's only like 10 or 11 days left. So you guys haven't backed that, please check it out. It's in the um, the the links in the description of this video. Uh, Gary still has uh, Brush with Destiny, his ink art book, and that's still open, isn't it, Gary? Yes, but not for long. But not for long. So you guys, if you haven't backed that, check out the campaign. Link is in the description of this video. Uh, Kelsey Scribbles, uh, that is still also available to be backed. You've got to be close yep. to putting that thing together, don't you? Yeah, it's be it's almost put together now, and I'm I'm going to be doing it uh, early next year because the uh, I'm getting uh, Phil and the boys, uh, the the boys, Phil and the other boy, uh, to uh, do the the just the shipping. Okay, um, we're going to take care of it for so, you. So and yeah, they're pretty busy uh, for the holidays, so we're doing it first first of the year. So everything is getting prepared, and then we're just going to wash it and get it out of there, and and, uh, and then that's it. We can't wait. On to the next thing. Yes, and uh, then David, of course, uh, Legion Arts' is Bass Reeves' uh, West of Hell, written by our own Kevin Grievous, drawn by masterfully by David Williams. And How did we've Kevin been... become ours? I know, right? <laughs> he's well, ever, ever since it went, he went on your show, he's, oh, he's, <laughs> gonna, yeah, he's, like, he's one of the guys now. He was on my show twice. Okay. Yeah, he's a gray beard. That's right. So, you know. He's gray stubble. If he could yeah. draw, he'd be on this show right now. That's true. So um, anyway, so you want to check that out? So supposedly that's uh, we're we're told that's going to be shipping in January. So it won't be open long. You guys get in there and back that if you haven't. Looks like a really great project. Uh, six issues of Bass Reeves, mm -hmm. um, the full also, story. Also, Cyber Frog Monday. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you gotta go check that out. That's for I don't. 
fearsome, and it's yeah. a holiday uh, sale that Ethan is doing. Yeah, I did. I didn't have a link for that, but I, it is I on. It to you. Yeah, but it's not in the chat. I mean, oh. Um, so I'll post it later. I guess I can after we close out. I will post it in the, in the uh, yes. description of this video. Not in the chat, excuse me, but in the, the description of this video. So anyway, guys, there it is. Uh, we have completed Universal Monsters. Next week, it's, uh, I think, <laughs> Kelsey's turn to pick more manga. So All right. <clears throat> the return of manga. There we go. <laughs> but, uh, Aaron calls it uh, manga. Manga. <laughs> manga. Please, it's uh, manga. Yeah, well, that's what I always call it that I catch myself going, that's not right. Manja. Manja. <laughs> manja. <laughs> So anyway, we want to thank everybody for joining us. You guys in the chat, we couldn't do it without you. That's for sure. We appreciate your participation. Um, please hit the like and subscribe on your way out the door if you have not done so already. And uh, you guys have a safe week. And uh, we will see you guys right here next time on Graybeard Studio. Good night, everybody.